she wore blue. The following is a special presentation of the Boomer Sports Network. Ring your bell, stomp your feet. Everybody get ready for the Omaha beat. Jackson has time, looks at the end zone, has a man, it is caught. It's a touchdown. It's a diving catch for Tyler Jones. He's going downfield. He has a man, but it's short. It's in the oh, You can't throw a pass to a fat guy. Jones to 10 to 15. He's got room. Wow. 25, 20, kicker. 15, 10, 5. Coast to coast. The snap. Placement's down. The kick is blocked. Oh my God. It's blocked. It's out of play. And it took 22 years of aging, but the beef are now graded champions. Omaha Beef Professional Indoor Football is proudly brought to you by A United, All Hands Waterproofing, Amanda Spencer and State Farm, Amazing Pizza Machine, American Shaman, Better Bodies, Beyond Golf, Bright Minds Learning Center, Club Car Wash, Comfort Inn, Complete Fitness, Craft Axe, Frost Training Center, Crown Property Management, DBS Burke, Eternal Tattoo, Fazoli, Fire Water Bar and Grill, Frank's Pizzeria, GBR Auto and Sale, Habits, Horsepower Realty, Iams, Imagine Body, In Phase Car Audio, Jerseys, Lansky's Pizza, Live Hydration, Nebraska Orthopedic Med, New Spine, Quality Clinic Research, Rebath, RMHC, Ryland Contracting, Shields, The Bastion Moving Company, See the Trainer, Soldier Valley Spirit, South O Roofing, Summit Center Insurance, Titanium HVAC, Union Bank and Trust, Meridian Credit Union, West Omaha Cairo, Wounded Warriors Family Support. We are coming to you from Sioux City, Iowa, right up I-29 for the 48th edition of the I-29 rivalry. This time, it's for a trip to Champions Bowl 7, the CIF League Championship game. Good evening, everybody. I'm Todd Walkenhorst, and tonight, we are coming to you from the Tyson Event Center, where it's another beautiful night for indoor football. And tonight, the stakes have never been higher in the I-29 rivalry. As a winner of this game, secures a spot in next weekend's league championship game, Champions Bowl 7. Out of 48 meetings in 20 plus years between these two teams, this is only the third time these two teams have met in the playoffs. Omaha has won both of those games. There's also been many other games between these two teams with playoffs at stake, and Sioux City knows that and remembers that. Omaha's ended their season the last two years. Last year, a 40 and 39 playoff victory in Omaha. And in 2019, the Beef defeated the Bandits in the last regular season game to secure the last playoff spot that season and to end the Bandits season. Last time these two teams met, it was one of the best indoor football games people have ever seen. It was at the end of April. It was a game that saw 14 lead changes and 26 points scored in the final 60 seconds of the game as Sioux City was victorious 60 to 49. You'd expect nothing less in this rivalry, a series that has Sioux City winning 24 games and Omaha winning 23. Sioux City is nine and one, top seed in the playoffs and looking to host a championship game next weekend with a win. Omaha is defending CIF champions and looking for the upset to earn a trip to their second straight Champions Bowl and to defend the league title. When we come back, We'll chat with the head coach, Marvin Jones, about tonight's game. We'll be right back. You're listening to the CIF Playoffs and Omaha Beef Professional Indoor Football all across the Boomer Sports Network. Ryland Contracting is your go-to Omaha general contracting family-owned business to call for any of your home's problems. Quality, integrity, and reliability are the foundation of each and every project that we do for you, our customer. From the top of your house to the bottom and everything in between, including store restoration, we do it all and are your one-stop provider for all your home's needs. Call us for a free quote at 531-301-2389 or visit our website at rylandcontracting.com. It's our goal to make the experience from start to finish a great and memorable one, and it's why we're proud to partner with the 
Omaha Beef. That's Ryland Contracting, your pro team for your home. Sebastian Moving, the official moving company of the Omaha Beef, is here for all your moving needs. We are fully committed to being your top-rated and professional moving company with a personal touch that we take pride in. We offer residential and commercial moves throughout the state. Moving is stressful, so let us do the work. We pride ourselves on delivering the quality service that you deserve as a customer. We are available seven days a week at no additional cost to you. Call us at 402-979-6927 or visit our website at SebastianMovingOmaha.com. Whether you run the race, make the catch, cast a line, pitch a tent, or just look good doing it, Shields Omaha has your gear. From athletic clothing from your favorite team, cold weather gear to keep you warm, to the best camping selection and the most stylish and functional women's outerwear and footwear, Shields has the widest selection of the best brands in the business. When you're ready to get out, get in the game, or get going, get to Shields. Shields, we're right there with you at Village Point in Omaha. See, the trainer offers a full line of in-stock bracing home health and rehabilitation products. Whether your pain results from a chronic condition or an acute injury, they're dedicated to improving your quality of life. Their knowledgeable staff will do their best in assisting you in selecting the appropriate product to best fit your needs. In-stock products for orthopedic, sports medicine, rehabilitation, home health, and patient education. Visit See the Trainer. They've got you covered. Visit them today, 131st and West Dodge Road, or online at seethetrainer.com. With head coach Marvin Jones before the semifinal of the CPIF playoff game with the Sioux City Bandits familiar foe. See them all the time. You didn't have to tell your team a whole lot about them. Just give us your thoughts going into this game. It seems only fitting that it really comes down to these two teams in the playoffs. Well, thoughts going into this game is that I expect to be a great game between both teams. Uh, we're very familiar with each other, obviously, this time of year, playoff times. Um, Having to, you know, play them early in the season was a good test for us. I mean, you know, there's no secrets between us. They do what they do, and we're not going to change what, you know, what much of what we have to do. We just got to play hard and make plays and capitalize on the cap capitalize on the situation. Omaha has only seen Sioux City once this year. You just alluded to that as up here at the end of April is a game that an epic indoor game. 14 lead changes, 26 points in the last uh, 60 seconds of the game. Um, but that game probably cost Omaha some playoff positioning, and then at the same time, really feels like it, it gave a source of confidence to Sioux City, and uh, they went on to put a 9-1 and regular season record in. How, how big was that game to, to both teams? Well, I think it was definitely huge for us, I mean, especially with the implications at the end of the season, but, I mean, if you kind of go back over the years, they've always kind of got that first game when we got into the playoffs in the last game. We've kind of you know, won that over the last few years. So I'm sure there's still going to be some doubt in their minds, though. Uh, but, you know, if we go out and play hard and, and, and really go out with some intensity, I mean, we can kind of put that fire out right away. Actually talking with uh, Sioux City head coach Irv Strobean earlier this week, that's about the only thing you could talk about front and center of their mind. You know what's on their mind is that Omaha's ended their last two full seasons uh, in 2019 and in 2021 either playoffs or, or a game to get into the playoffs. Uh, you know that's on their mind. Does that give Omaha any advantage uh, going in that spoiler role once again? No, it doesn't give us any advantage because most of the guys on this team wasn't here. <laughs> <laughs> but but I, I'm sure there's some doubt, uh, you know, in some places. But, I, you know, as the game goes along, they continue to make plays, make plays, and obviously that's going to diminish. So, you know, I think it's right out the gate. We're going to have to try to stifle that, to, to, you know, to keep that doubt in there until hopefully we can, you know, get something going and, and, and move ahead and get up maybe two or three scores. A little bit of a broken record here towards the end of the season, but I'll ask you about again going into the semifinal game. Team still not has probably peaked or played a complete game that you want to see. Uh, game against Southwest Kansas in the playoffs last week, no disrespect to them, but it's probably a closer game than a lot of people thought that would be. Uh, let's talk about, you know, is the team hitting their stride? And obviously, if they don't today, you know, it's not going to matter. Well, I already told my team, they got to go out and play with intensity. And I told them, you know, um, you know, if we, we have any rendition of, rendition of anything that we did last week, um, I, I feel like this is either going to be a close game or it's going to be a, a, a big gap, you know, in, in scoring. So, um, you know, if we go out there and, and, and don't do what we do right immediately, I think that it can, you know, it can kind of get out of hand. I mean, they're at home. I mean, they got a lot of advantages, home crowd. Um, 
you know, us, you know, being, you know, obviously that's just the thing. And plus, you know, their their last couple games they finished up. I mean, you know, they put up 70 points. You know, so I mean, they seem like they're hitting the stride and. Uh, with the guys they have, not too many injuries, same guys. So, I mean, they look to be pretty healthy, and I think that's going to be, you know, that will play a little into it because, you know, both teams, you know, obviously playing, you know, this time of the year. I mean, it's just really just who's going to be the most healthiest team. Uh, you talked about right there a chance for a game to snowball when you're on the road and momentum going the other direction, crowd gets into it. How important is it to take that crowd out of the game early? Woo, it's very important. <laughs> Especially, I mean, you got to take a lot of the elements out. Uh, you know, but my thing is, like I tell my guys, you don't want to get to keep things close and keep letting teams hang around. You have to go out and finish. Um, you know, you, you don't want to get in a position where, you know, things kind of compound. One mistake and all of a sudden something else happens and all of a sudden, you know, you, you know you're, you're out of contention for winning the game. Winner goes to Champions Bowl 7. Omaha looking for their second straight appearance defending CIF champions. Good luck tonight, Coach. Big one. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. That's the head coach Marvin Jones a little bit earlier. We are almost set for kickoff. It's the Omaha Beef and the Sioux City Bandits. The winner heads on to Champions Bowl 7. Kickoff straight ahead. You're listening to Omaha Beef Professional Indoor Football right here on the Boomer Sports Network. Are you looking for a new or different career path? Do you want a career where you can make a difference? The Nebraska Maintenance Academy may be just what you're looking for. This training program will get you ready for a career in multifamily property maintenance out in the field in just eight weeks. No need to spend a fortune on tuition or years in a classroom. The next session will begin on May 16th, so sign up now online at nemaintenanceacademy.org or call 531-333-4796. South Bell Roofing is the official roofing company of the Omaha Beef with over 20 years of trusted service to the Omaha and Council Bluffs area. We offer an A-plus Better Business Bureau rating. Warranties that are real, a business built on repeat customers. Call us for a free estimate at 402-612-0791 or visit our website at southbellroofing.com. That's South Bell Roofing Company, the official roofing company of your Omaha Beef. At Union Bank, People don't have your money. Your money has people. First home people, investment people, people people, people who answer the phone and your chats, dream car people, dream retirement people, driving your dream car in your dream retirement people, small business people, credit card people, and all the other people you need. At Union Bank, our people help you do more than you dreamed possible. So stop in and say hello. We can't wait to see you. Union Bank and Trust, member FDIC. At Rebath, we believe everyone should have a bathroom they love. Whether it's an update to your tub or shower, finding comfortable, safe aging solutions, or full custom bathroom remodels, we do it all. And we handle the entire process from design to done. Get more than a room. Get a beautiful bathroom you love with Rebath. For special offers and to schedule your free in-home consultation, visit us at Rebath.com or call 402-281-2390. The West Omaha chiropractic team has been serving the local community for over 25 years. Throughout that period, they've guided countless patients through treatment and discovering a new level of health and wellness. Their team of chiropractors understand that each individual is different and their approach to chiropractic care varies slightly from patient to patient. Many of their patients want instant pain relief, while others might want long for increased performance and longevity. Whatever your reason for visiting them, they'll discuss your specific health issues and develop a patient-forward comprehensive plan for achieving your goal. Visit online at at westochiro.com or call 402-527-8341. At Rebath, we believe everyone should have a bathroom they love. Whether it's an update to your tub or shower, finding comfortable, safe aging solutions, or full custom bathroom remodels, we do it all. And we handle the entire process from design to done. Get more than a room. Get a beautiful bathroom you love with Rebath. For special offers and to schedule your free in-home consultation, visit us at Rebath.com or call 402-281-2390. Welcome back to Sioux City, Iowa. It is the 48th edition of the I-29 rivalry between the two longest-running indoor football teams in the country, the Omaha Beef, the Sioux City Bandits. And as we said in the open, they've only met three times ever in the playoffs. This will be playoff game number three. 
Omaha was victorious in the other two. And this is the deepest in the playoffs that these two teams have ever met. They've never met in the championship game. So the semifinals for a trip to the championship game, which is the CIF championship game. They call it Champions Bowl. They're up to number seven. Omaha is defending champions as they won Champions Bowl number six last year in Salina. And based on the results of that game, Omaha will be playing the winner of the Salina Billings game if they're victorious tonight. We are ready to go. Omaha will receive. It is fielded by Trey Dudley Giles at the 15. It's brought out to midfield, and they will have good starting field position here tonight. Sioux City Bandits won the coin toss. They deferred their option to half number two. So Omaha gets the ball first, and that means that Andrew Jackson will take the field for the Omaha Beef, the veteran quarterback out of Seton Hill, led this team to a championship in 2021. Free agent signing previously with the Salina Liberty. He's got a lot of experience, but he does not run the ball much himself, and neither does Omaha Beef. Andrew Jackson is a throw-first offense, throwing for over 167 yards per game. That is top of the league. On first down, he will throw the ball. It will be complete for a short game to Montero DeBose. Or actually has Norman Darden over there. He picks up three yards on the far sideline. It'll be second down in seven as we are underway here in Sioux City. Omaha running no huddle, up tempo. That's what they typically do early in the game as Andrew Jackson will load up the left side, puts two in motion, hands it off to his running back. That's Darden once again. He scoots around inside the 20, stacked up, still fighting for yards, and the ball's stripped away, and Sioux City has it. A strip turnover, and the first turnover of the game goes to Sioux City, LaRongi Vason out of West Georgia, stripped it away as Darden was trying to get some extra yards to continue that possession. He fought down to the 15-yard line. The forward progress was still going. And the ball was stripped away, and the first turnover of the game goes to Sioux City. Sioux City is a team that comes in 9-1 and has a lot of momentum. They've been playing very good football down the stretch. And uh, Omaha comes into a game. They were minus two on turnovers on the season. Uh, That's a stat that's just not what you'll typically see for championship caliber teams. They're now minus three on the season as they have turned over the opening possession. We'll see if Sioux City can take advantage. They start their own 14-yard line. Lorenzo Brown's the quarterback for Sioux City. High snap, they set up a screen. It's complete inside the 15, out to the 17-yard line. They pick up about three yards on first down. It'll be second down and seven. Lorenzo Brown on the season has been very successful leading this team to a 9-1 record. He did miss a couple of games with injury, but they really didn't miss a beat. He came back a week ago, and he's putting numbers back up on the board for the Bandits and trying to earn a trip to the championship game for Sioux City. Here's the handoff on second down and seven. Looked like they're nearly offside as they let the play go. It's Drew Prohaska into Omaha territory. Inside the 20 down to the 19-yard line, he picks up a dozen yards. The move that chains will be first down for Sioux City at the Omaha 19. We talked about it in the pregame. For Omaha, they need to come in here, take this crowd out of this game on the road, and try to get some momentum. Otherwise, this is a game that could easily snowball against them. And it's been an ominous start for Omaha as they turned over the opening possession. And Sioux City is looking to take advantage. It's first down and 10. It's at the 20-yard line of Omaha. 12 minutes to go here, opening quarter of play. Snap, handoff, Prohaska, big hole, and he bounces around. He gets down to the 10-yard line. That'll be first down as he picks up 10 yards on the carry. Veteran running back out of Briarcliff sets up first and goal for Sioux City. Sioux City moving left to right on your Boomer radio dial here tonight. Wearing their all black with red trim. Omaha in their all whites with orange numerals and trim. First and goal. Left side. High motion. Hand off to Prohaska. Gets stacked up at the line of scrimmage after gaining about a yard. And it'll be second down and goal at the nine. Sioux 
Sioux City on the season, averaging 51.4 points per game. That is tops in the league compared to 42.4 for Omaha, which was third. And they're looking to try to take the early lead after the Omaha turnover on their first possession. Second goal from the nine. Brown puts wide receivers in motion, fakes to Prohaska, dumps it off to his tight end. It's complete inside the five. And it'll be third down and goal as Blake Frank was the receiver. Six foot four, 300 pounds out of Morningside. The, the guards can declare eligible one of them before the snap. That makes them a tight end. They tend to do it on every play. Every once in a while, somebody will throw to them. They did right there. Third and goal for Sioux City. Brown is now under center. Prohaska in the backfield. A little jet sweep near side. And has a lane as a touchdown for Sioux City. Fred Bruno on the carry. He's been playing football indoors for a long time. Five foot eight, 210 pounds out of Wayne State. And actually, they're going to say they touched the wall right before that goal line. Irv Strobing's on the field. He can't believe it. But that's going to make it fourth and goal from just outside of the goal line. There's two coaches on the field arguing about it right now, which is illegal. That should be a penalty. But they're letting it go as they're still discussing this over there and letting the play clock expire. Now they're going to stop the clock. We'll see if Sioux City is calling for a review on this play. Looked like Bruno had some room. I thought he got in, but it's against the wall. We're obstructed on our sideline. And uh, quite frankly, it's going to be hard for him to review it because the camera angles are also on this side and obstructed by the wall. So the officials are going to call for a review, which will not cost Sioux City a timeout. They do have an overhead camera shot here. We'll see if that's going to be available to them. But call on the field was short of the goal line and fourth and goal. They'll go take a look at it and uh, see if they have some evidence to give the touchdown to Sioux City. Timeout on the field. We'll be right back. You're listening to Omaha Beef Professional Indoor Football right here on the Boomer Sports Network. The Omaha-based Wounded Warriors Family Support Organization is a top-rated, veteran-founded, and veteran-run charity, directly serving the needs of our nation's wounded veterans, families right here in the Omaha metro area, and throughout the state of Nebraska. Our mission is to provide support to the families of those who have been wounded, injured, or killed during combat operations. The families of our casualties suffer in many ways, some physically, some psychologically. To find out how you can help support those who have helped us, visit their website, www.fs.org, or by calling 402 502 7 7557 for more information. All Hands Waterproofing is a locally operated and family owned basement waterproofing and foundation repair company right here in the greater Omaha metro area. All Hands Waterproofing is not a nationwide cookie cutter franchise company that operates off of its three core values of quality, honesty, and integrity. Our primary focus is to acquire and utilize the very best foundation waterproofing and repair materials and services available in the industry to protect your home or business. Call us today for a quote at 402 206 9815 or visit our website at allhandswaterproofing.com. Better Bodies, powered by Complete Fitness, is the official health club and fitness center of the Omaha Beef. Located at 4117 South 120th Street in Omaha, we are a family-owned business and have been serving the people of Omaha for 30-plus years. Every day, we are changing people's lives and making a positive impact on their health. We have the programming, facility, and staff to help you reach your goals. Come in and experience our friendly, motivational, and helpful atmosphere for yourself with no obligation. If you are like hundreds of your friends and neighbors, we know you'll feel great as you start your fitness journey visit our website for more information at betterbodies-omaha.com craft axe throwing creates memorable experiences for everyone friends and family events staff outings or parties book a lane today by calling 402-313-8240 or visit our website at craftaxthrowing.com today and get in on the action that's craft axe throwing official partner of the omaha beef Welcome. Welcome back to Sioux City. As you could judge by the crowd reaction, the call has been overturned. They said that the runner did hit the wall, but he had not been contacted. And you have to be down by contact like in the NFL. So, therefore, he was still in play. And Fred Bruno gets the first touchdown of the game for Sioux City as Greg Connery comes in to try the extra point. 
Connery on the season, averaging over 70% on extra points. Good snap, kick is up. And it is good. 9.23 remaining here in the opening quarter, and Sioux City is on the scoreboard first, taking advantage of an Omaha fumble on their opening drive to take a 7 to nothing lead. Winner goes to Champions Bowl 7. We'll be right back. You're listening to Omaha Beef Professional Indoor Football here on the Boomer Sports Network. State Farm Insurance agent Amanda Spencer is not only a proud sponsor of the Omaha Beef, but also the proud sponsor of the honorary family of the game at all Omaha Beef home games that recognizes those who give back to our community. Amanda and her staff serve the entire states of Nebraska and Iowa, so call her today at 402-346-5553 for a free quote on your car, home, renters, life, or business insurance needs. You can also visit her website at aspencerinsurance.com. State Farm agent Amanda Spencer. Proud sponsor of your Omaha Beef. Back at the Tyson Event Center, Sioux City, Iowa. Sioux City Bandits out in front of the Omaha Beef, 7 to nothing, 9.23 to go. In the first quarter, winner of the I-29 rivalry is headed to the CIF Championship game next week against the winner of the Billings Outlaw. Outlaws in the Salina Liberty, that game taking place down in Salina. Salina is ahead 7 to nothing at the end of the first quarter. Sioux City wins tonight. They will host Champions Bowl 7 right here on this field. If Omaha wins, they would go to the winner of Salina and Billings. Connery, high, long kick, and that one's going to go over the wall. He did not want to do that as Omaha will start their second drive in the same place as the first drive at the 25 yard line on the touchback. So good field position for Omaha to start their second drive, but they find themselves in a hole seven to nothing. As Omaha look like they're moving the ball well on the ground, but a second effort as Norman Darden was trying to run the ball and get first down yardage and it was stripped away and turned over. See if Omaha can tie this game up. First down from the 25-yard line. High motion right side. Jackson rolls out to his left, looks downfield, throws to has a man at the goal line. It's caught. It's a touchdown. Montero DeBose, one play, 25 yards, and Omaha has responded. Montero DeBose, 5'10", 170 pounds. Out of Bethel College with the completion. And Omaha quick strikes. And is an extra point away from tying this game up. DeBose, fourth touchdown of the season. Here's Jeremy Reynolds for the extra point. The kick is up. And it is good, and we have some pushing and shoving. As you expect, we're going to have some John here tonight. We'll see if Randy Hagedorn's crew can keep this under control as Ben Pister for Sioux City is talking with Jordan Jones. We've seen Jordan Jones in the middle of a lot of extracurriculars. He's going to have to keep in check here tonight. So one play and one score for Omaha. 8-11 to go here in the first quarter. And we are knotted up at seven. We talked about it. these two teams met April 30th right here at the Tyson Events Center. And what a game we saw on that night out of the first 47 meetings between these two teams. That may have been the one of the probably the best uh, between anybody who's seen all these teams regularly between these two uh Team, or all the games regularly between these two teams. 14 lead changes in that game all night long, and then 26 points in the final one minute, and Sioux City came from behind to take that game 60-49. to 49. Right now, back and forth to start this one out. Be hard to top that one, but got a good start here in this semifinal playoff game. Jeremy Reynolds puts the ball on the tee to kick it, Right to left, two men back deep for Sioux City. Bouncing kick, takes a big hop. It's fielded by Prohask at the 5 to the 10. Stutter step 15 into the air. Brought down at the 19-yard line, 14 yards on the return for Drew Prohaska. 
who we've already called his number over and over here tonight. He checks out as they send the offense on the field. They'll give him a little breather. We'll see what they have in store for drive number two. This one will start at their own 20-yard line. Both teams have had good field position for their first two drives here in the first quarter. Lorenzo Brown, Jr. out of Sioux Falls University. Previously with the Sioux Falls Storm in the IFL, takes a low snap on first down. Double clutches, it's in the air, it's picked off. Omaha has it. Back to the 20, the 15. Jordan Jones drags a couple of ball carriers with him. Inside the five-yard line in the second turnover of the game goes to Omaha, and what an effort as that ball was deflected into the air, and Jordan Jones came out of the linebacker position and took it off the turf. Omaha has first and goal at the four-yard line of Sioux City, and the defense gets their first turnover here tonight. Great opportunity for Omaha. They start at the four-yard line of Sioux City. Jackson breaks the huddle. They start the clock. We approach seven minutes to go here in the opening quarter. Two wideouts to the far side. Up high for Omaha. A third on the line of scrimmage. Deshaun Jones in the backfield for Omaha. Jones gets the carry. Tries to find the hole. Leans forward to the goal line. It's a touchdown for Omaha. And the Beef have the lead as we go under seven minutes here in the first quarter, 13 to seven. Deshaun Jones, another one play drive for Omaha and their two touchdowns have come on one play drives. One starting at the four yard line and the other one at the 25 yard line as Deshaun Jones gets his 20th rushing touchdown. of the season as Randy Hagedorn has to remind Sioux City not to run the video board as Omaha is trying to kick into the uprights. They've got all their graphics going, which is distracting. They have not, there it goes, now turned it off. And Reynolds will come in for the extra point. Turn it off, he puts it between the uprights and with under seven minutes to go here in the first quarter. Omaha has their first lead of the night. They lead 14 to seven here in Sioux City. So each team has turned the ball over and each team's offense has responded with a touchdown after the turnover. What an opening. Eight and a half minutes here in Sioux City where we have seen three touchdowns already. Two lead changes and 21 points. Good crowd here in Sioux City at the Tyson Events Center. Good contingent of B fans came up on a couple of fan buses. You can hear the cowbells here tonight. Up here in Sioux City. Winner goes to the championship game. Omaha's defending champions. They'd like a chance to defend their crown on the field. Reynolds approaches the ball, puts it into play. Low line drive kick towards the wall. It bounces over the goal line after hitting the ground, and that will be a touchback. Either in the end zone or at the one yard line, either way this ball will come out to the five yard line, and a good kickoff by Jeremy Reynolds. Randy Hagedorn confirms my suspicions, and Sioux City will have the long field in front of them as they start at their own five-yard line. So a lot of action here in the first nine minutes. We've seen three touchdowns. We've seen two turnovers. We've seen... Two one-play scoring drives by Omaha. Sioux City starting at their own five. Men in motion. Look nearly off sides, but they hand it off. They let the play go. Five yards, 10 yards, 12 yards. Continues to run. And stacked up as Omaha tries to strip the ball away. They're letting them play. 
with that forward progress here tonight as they pick up 13 yards on first down out to the 18-yard line. First down for Sioux City. Salina has increased their lead to 13 to nothing against the Billings Outlaws. Salina wins. They would come to Sioux City. If Sioux City wins, Omaha would visit Salina if the Beef are victorious. Approaching five minutes to go. Two wideouts near side go into high motion out of the pistol for Brown. Fakes the handoff. Wants to go downfield. Now tucks it under. It's in and out of the hands as he tried to dump it off to Kamal Cass out of the backfield. Couldn't bring it in. He started running before he had that ball. He had plenty of Black AstroTurf in front of him would have been a big gain. Instead, it's second down and 10. Sioux City, if you're an indoor football fan, has the old Nebraska danger turf from Grand Island. It's black between the goal lines in the field. Used to be red. They painted the end zone. It's worn off. You're seeing the green underneath. Nice field here in Sioux City. First year they've used it. Here's second down 10. Cass gets the handoff straight up the middle. He picks up two yards. But it'll be third down and eight for Sioux City. Cass, 5'11", 190 pounds, lining up in that pistol out of eastern New Mexico. We've seen him make some plays over the last few seasons with Sioux City against Omaha. Clock under four minutes to go, quarter number one. Sioux City lines them up, two wideouts on each side. Empty formation for Brown. Puts a man in motion, high motion near side. The ball comes loose. Omaha looked like they were off sides, and now they will blow this one dead. As Omaha had a free shot at the quarterback, so they blow that one dead, and we'll get the official call. So Omaha offsides from the right side. A little early off the line was Jared Harris, who they've got playing up on the defensive line. He'll switch back and forth between there and the linebacker position. But turns a third down and eight into a more manageable third down and three now for Sioux City. Beef lead 14 to seven, three and a half minutes to go. First quarter of play. Here in Sioux City, balls out to the 25-yard line. Lorenzo Brown goes under center. They pitch it to the right side. They've got first down yardage up the near dasher board. Fred Bruno once again picks up six or seven inside the Omaha 20. And it'll be first down for the Bandits. Bandits trying to grind out a nice long scoring drive for their second touchdown of the night. Omaha's two touchdowns have come on one play drives, both of them. First down and 10, Sioux City. They spot the ball at the 19-yard line. This turf has no hash marks on the field. That's very unusual and probably illegal. Dump off pass, Fred Bruno near side, down to the 15-yard line. And he picks up about six yards on the play be second down and four I don't remember this field not having hash marks last time we were here I don't know if it's been repainted and they did not put them back on and painted over them you have the yard lines the 5 10 15 20 25 etc but no hash marks for the individual yards second down and four Lorenzo Brown under center Little jet sweep near side. Bruno once again jumps over a defender, finds the goal line. Is he in? He is. And Fred Bruno has his second touchdown of the night as Sioux City is an extra point away from tying this one back up. Fred Bruno out of Wayne State. Five rushing touchdowns on the season coming into tonight. Add two more for him. That is... Seven on the season as Greg Connery comes in to try his second extra point of the night. 85% on extra points. 46 of 54 coming into tonight. 
This is his second attempt, and this one is good as well. 1.15 remaining here in the opening quarter. We are knotted up at 14. Winner goes to the CIF championship game. Timeout on the field. We'll take it with them. We'll be right back. You're listening to Omaha Beef Professional Indoor Football all across the Boomer Sports Network. The Amazing Pizza Machine voted Omaha's best family entertainment center and best place for birthday parties. The Amazing Pizza Machine is the perfect destination for any celebration from family gatherings, post-proms, corporate events, and birthday parties. With laser tag, thrill rides, go-karts, bowling, arcade games, and an unlimited buffet, the food and fun at Amazing Pizza Machine never ends. That's the Amazing Pizza Machine, proud partners of your Omaha Beef professional indoor football team. Bright Minds Learning Center is the official daycare provider of the Omaha Bee. With flexible hours for both mornings and nights, they're here to help with your most precious gifts your children. With directors and staff on hand to provide a clean, safe, and educational environment, plus being one of just a few daycares who provide transportation to and from school, it's no surprise that they have such amazing reviews and testimonials from their clients. Schedule an appointment or visit today by calling 402-934-5566 or visit their Facebook page, Bright Minds Learning Center, for more info. Again, that's Bright Minds Learning Center. American Shaman Old Market, the official CBD provider of the Omaha Beef, is located in downtown Omaha. CBD American Shaman Old Market is dedicated to bringing wellness to the world through ultra-concentrated, turpin-rich CBD oil derived from all-natural, high-quality industrial hemp. We follow only the best industry standards, making our hemp oil the most effective and the highest quality on the market today. As a company, we are focused on the welfare of our customers and even provide a compassionate care program with discounts for those in need those who are low income, and for veterans. We offer competitive prices and have a money-back guarantee. Call us today at 402-359-1248 for all of your CBD needs. Semi-final playoff action here in Sioux City. We are knotted up at 14 with 115 to go here in the first quarter of play. Both teams Two touchdown drives, and both teams have turned the ball over once here just in the opening quarter. Winner advances to Champions Bowl number seven. Sioux City, top seed of the playoffs. Omaha Beef defending CIF champions. Greg Connery, high end over end kick, keeps this one in play. It's fielded at the two. Chris Perry out to the five, the ten, dancing around, spins around 15, and finally brought down at the 17-yard line. Return of 15 yards for the defensive back out of Michigan. So Omaha has 14 points, but and there is a flag back here way behind the play. Let's see if they're going to back Omaha up. They do call holding on Omaha. That came from the back judge way far away from the play. And it's half the distance. So decent return wiped out as they move the ball back. And Omaha will start at their own nine-yard line. Omaha ran three plays on their opening drive before fumbling it and then has run two one-play drives for touchdowns. Andrew Jackson wants to start on the left hash. He'll move the ball over and oblige as we're under 30 seconds to go here in the first quarter. High motion in the slots for Jackson. Empty backfield, quick throw, and it's off target. Not on the same page with his wide receiver, Alexander Noble. Ten seconds left. That should expire the clock here in the first quarter of play. And the beef will let the clock run out and take it to quarter number two. What a first quarter here in the semifinal playoff game here in Sioux City. 14 all in the I-29 rivalry. Quarter number two right around the corner. Stick with us. You're listening to Omaha Beef Professional Indoor Football here on the Boomer Sports Network. Hey, you've got a car, but now we need to make it a cool car. One place to go in town, InPhase Car Audio. They've got you set up. You need an alarm. You need amplifiers, speakers. 
let people know that you're coming. Radar detectors, LED lighting, safety solutions, and more. If you want to add it to your car, they have it at InPhase Car Audio. Visit their website, InPhaseCarAudio.com, or even better yet, stop by the store, 134th and L Street, InPhaseCarAudio.com. Nebraska Orthopedic and Sports Medicine, they strive to be a center of excellence for orthopedics and sports medicine. They're also the official doctors of the Omaha Beef Professional Indoor Football Team. They're a group of board-certified orthopedic physicians, many of whom have had fellowships or trained in subspecialty areas. Their physicians have trained among some of the top medicine experts and training facilities in the country. They place a great deal of value on each and every opportunity they have to assist patients regain their quality of life they deserve. Call them today, 402-488-3322. Welcome back to Sioux City, Iowa, Omaha, and Sioux City tied at 14 as we start quarter number two. Omaha second down and 10 from their own nine-yard line. Trips to the near side for Omaha. One wide out to the left, no running backs in the game. Andrew Jackson puts him into motion. Here comes a pass rush. He has a player downfield as Rashad Pargo, but he can't hit him as Ben Pister got to Andrew Jackson after the play. And Gave him a pretty good whack. So third down and 10 for the beef. And this has been the Achilles heel for Omaha all season long. 32 of 88 on third down conversions. Only 36%. Very low completion rate. That's in the lower half of the CIF. They need 10 yards here on third down. High motion out of the slots. Jackson has it. Looks. It's complete. First down here. It's Montero DeBose. Stretches the ball out to the 19-yard line. They needed 10. He got all of them, and they will move the chains. No, they're going to say he's just short. I'm not sure how they're making that call. And there's no yard lines here, and they have to get back on the ball, and Omaha gets stacked up and gets stopped on fourth down. I'll go back to the play before. That spot was, don't want to say poor, but it definitely was not good. And you go back to the fact there are literally no hash marks or yard lines on this field. And they didn't even measure that. I'm not sure how that happened. And Omaha, though, to their fault, did not take some time to try to get a review or, or analyze the situation. Instead, they tried to get to the line and run a play quickly and turned it over on a broken play. Huge break for the Bandits as they will take over at the Omaha 15-yard line. Trying to get back out in front. 13-33 remaining. Sets up the screen far side and it's in and out of the hands. It's incomplete. Great coverage by Chris Perry as they try to set up the screen. A little bread and butter plays. If you've seen Sioux City over the years, you're going to see a lot of short passes. You're going to see a lot of screens. You're going to see a lot of jet sweep. That was to Andre Ludden, who's as good a receiver as there is on this team. Six foot three, 225 pounds. CIF veteran with Sioux City, played in the IFL, as well as St. Joseph's College. Second down and 10. Bandits threatening at the Omaha 15. Pistol formation. Here's the handoff. Prohaska gets tripped up. He loses a yard or two. Prohaska gets met by Carl Bivens immediately. Looked like he got tripped up a little bit, lost his footing, but you may have seen Bivens charging at him and fell to the ground. Halftime down in Salina, 13-0 Liberty. Omaha can pull this out, and Salina remains in front. We'd have a rematch of Champions Bowl number six, that epic contest, where Omaha defeated Salina 40-39. Back to this, third down and 11. Motion on both sides. We got movement before. We got flags. Was Omaha offsides? They didn't blow it dead. I believe that's going to be on the offense since they let it go. Let's get the call. That was on the defense. So they'd let Omaha go unevaded to the quarterback, as they like to say, and take a free hit on him without blowing that dead. So we're going to do some uh, officiating critique here tonight. And why not? 
Uh, that's a play that should have been blown dead. <laughs> when that offsides was committed. So they mark off five yards and makes it third down and six. The ball's at the 11-yard line, under 12 minutes to go here in the first half. Pistol formation, Prohaska is back there with Brown. High motion, steps back, third down and six. Dances around, right side, flag on the play, pumps. He'll keep it himself, hits the wall. And should be spotted back. But we're going to have to check this flag as well. I think we're going to have a hold against the Bandits. They'll bring it back. Here's the call from Randy Hagedorn. And it is a hold against Rashad Monero. And that will back Sioux City up. Sioux City was going to have fourth and short, depending on where they marked that ball. Instead, actually, I think they're going to talk about where they actually spotted him at. They will give him an option, but they're going to want to back this up. You're not going to give Sioux City fourth and short inside the 10-yard line, and now they have decided they'll, they'll move the ball back. And they spot it at the 21-yard line. So that'll make it third down and 16 after the penalty. Sioux City will have a couple shots at this. Remember, they have Greg Connery, one of the best field goal kickers in the game as well. This will be about a 35-yarder well within his range. Two wideouts in the slot, far side. They put him into motion, high snap. Brown brings it down, looks at the end zone, has a man, and it's complete. It's Fred Bruno once again. His third touchdown of the night, and that pass was actually intended for Damon Powell. And Bruno cut off his own receiver, took the ball, got the touchdown. There were two men wide open in the same place in the end zone for Sioux City. And Brown connects for Sioux City's third touchdown of the night. All three of them credited to Bruno. Connery comes in for the extra point, two for two on the night. Off the upright, we jinxed him. And he misses. And again, they failed to turn the TV off, or the monitor, the Jumbotron, in that end zone as they were instructed to. But uh, if you can't help out your home team, that's kind of on your operations, and that's kind of how things go sometimes here in Sioux City. 10.35 to go, first half of play, Sioux City 20, Omaha 14. We'll be right back. You're listening to Omaha Beef Professional Indoor Football here on the Boomer Sports Network. Frank's Pizzeria has two convenient locations at 5413 South 72nd Street in Ralston and 711 North 132nd Street in Omaha to serve you and your family. Frank's Pizzeria offers incredible homemade Italian food, including pizza, sandwiches, pasta, and of course, our mouth-watering classic desserts. Frank's Pizzeria makes the best of the best right in our own kitchen, which is why when you search for the best pizza in Omaha, you'll find Frank's Pizzeria. Visit us today at www.frankspizzeriaomaha.com for our full menu and to place your next order. Whether it's small-scale digital printing projects or a high-volume, high-end offset print project, DBS Burke has the proper equipment and craftsman-level machine operators to produce your message beyond your expectation. Find out why DBS Burke is the best source for mailing services, kitting, and fulfillment, wide-format printing projects such as posters, banners, signs, and signage. Call today, 402-455-1200 to schedule your next appointment. GBR Auto Sales and Service is your go-to provider for all your car care needs. They offer a full top-to-bottom in-house service center that not only takes care of all of your car's maintenance and repairs, but they even go the extra mile of picking up your car and dropping it off on any services, provided to take the hassle and stress off of your hands. Let them be your car's official provider and partner to keeping it on the road for a very long time while protecting your investment. Visit them at GBRAutosalesandService.com or call today at 402-999-8082 to schedule your next worry-free appointment. Back at the Tyson Event Center, Sioux City, Iowa, 10.35 to go. Sioux City 20, Omaha 14, winner advances to the CIF title game next Saturday. Greg, Greg Conry 
puts this one down to the goal line. Chris Perry out to the 5, 10. He's met. Gets past one defender. Drops the ball. I think Sioux City has it. Nope, nope. They come in and says that Omaha recovered, and that ball was stripped away once again. And the Beef were very fortunate. I don't think, nope, they did not recover it. They're going to say that the ball was fumbled and hit the wall, was put it out of bounds. So Chris Perry loses the handle on the second effort. That's the second time we've seen Omaha do it again. But fortunately, that one hit the wall, which killed it, and put it out of bounds at the 10-yard line. So Omaha trailing now by six as we go under 10 minutes to go here in the first half. We'll start their own 10-yard line. Trips to the near side. Jackson. Has time, wants it all, Rashad Pargo, it's over his head, incomplete. Man on man coverage, Rashad Pargo, we've seen them make that play probably almost ten times over the last three seasons. They'll open a drive and go for the home run ball and connect with Rashad Pargo. Could not bring that one down. It'll be second down and 10. Omaha is trying to get their third one play touchdown drive. A little better throw, he would have had it. Two wide outs on each side, high motion. Out of the slots, Jackson throws, gets it off complete to the 15 into the wall gain of six as Norman Darden is the receiver good spot at the 15 yard line be third down and five for Omaha both teams still have all three timeouts as we get to the latter part of the first half Jackson will operate empty, no running back in the game. Trips near side, two in high motion. Drops back, pass rush, has a man in, gets tripped up, Rashad Pargo, no flag on the play, it's incomplete. Rashad Pargo running down the field with Kevin Ransom, the rookie out of Wayne State. Legs got tangled up. And he falls to the ground. Omaha, fourth down and five from their own 15. Looks like they're going to leave the offense on the field. I don't know. Omaha's got pretty good defense. But Omaha's going to gamble from their own 15-yard line. They need five yards or else they're going to be in some trouble. High motion. Jackson. Everybody drops back. He's going for it all again into the end zone, and it is complete. It's a touchdown for Omaha. Can you believe it? Montero DeBose's second touchdown of the night on fourth down and five. He went for the home run ball once again and gets a 35-yard touchdown completion, and we are tied at 20. As we approach the midway point of the second quarter. Wow, what a play. Boy, he drops that ball, and Omaha gives that ball right back to Sioux City in scoring position. Omaha gambling tonight. Big game for the championship position. As the uh, kick is up for the extra point, and it is good. We got pushing and shoving once again. And they break it up, but more importantly, Marvin Jones trying to get his players off the field. Omaha is back out in front, 21 to 24. Lead changes here in the first half as we are sitting at the 6.50 mark of quarter number two with the beef out in front, 21 to 20. Well, we talked about that amazing game the first two time, or the first time these two teams met on April 30th. Still very improbable to top that game, but a little bit more at stake tonight. It's got some of the same characteristics as we're going back and forth in a dogfight here in the I-29 rivalry. J. 
Jeremy Reynolds to kick off. Drew Prohaska. Back deep for Sioux City along with Brendan Holmes. High end over end kick. Hopefully it stays in play. It's fielded by Holmes five yards deep. He brings it out to the five, the 10, the 15. He's got room in Omaha territory and he is going to go all the way coast to coast. Damon Howe, it will be credited as a 50 yard kickoff return for a touchdown, but it's going to be closer to 56 as he was deep in the end zone. And Omaha kick coverage broke down on the near side as he brought that right up the near dasher board. And took it all the way home for the score. So just like that, the Bandits are back out in front, 26-21. Connery coming in for the point after. Video monitor still on. Now they got it off. They're figuring this arena out. Omaha's got a personnel change and uh, had too many men on the field. And gets flagged for what's going to be an illegal substitution on the extra point. Officials are discussing how to enforce this. I believe they're going to give them the option, Sioux City that is, of either moving it up half the distance. If they want to try to go for two and make this a seven-point game, it would be an opportunity to do that. Or they could put the penalty in the bank and take it on return. It looks like that is what Irv Strovin wants to do. He wants to let the normally sure-footed kicker, Greg Connery, 85% on extra points attempt the kick. They actually call a unsportsmanlike co uh, conduct penalty against Gibson Zaya. That's what was the call. Not sure where they got that from. Marvin Jones doesn't either. That's his first. And you just heard second one would get him ejected, so he's got to be careful. Didn't see anything there compared to what we've been seeing all night. Connery for the extra point. Kick is up, and he's missed back-to-back -back extra points as we got pushing and shoving once again from Sioux City. No flag this time, as I guess they'll let them fight. Anyways, 5.46 to go here in the first half. Sioux City 26, Omaha 21. We have a timeout. We'll take it with them. We'll be right back. You're listening to Omaha Beef Professional Indoor Football on the Boomer Sports Network. Lansky's Pizza has three convenient locations, 4601 South 50th in Omaha, 3909 Twin Creek Drive in Bellevue, and 1311 North Broadway in Council Bluffs to feed your hungry appetite. Lansky's is a locally owned family restaurant that offers homemade pizza, pasta, and Philly steak sandwiches with freshly prepared ingredients made daily. Come in today and see why Lansky's has been an Omaha staple for more than 20 years. Visit our website at lansky's.biz to place your order today. 26-21, five lead changes here in the first half. 5.46 to go until halftime. Omaha is flagged for a unsportsmanlike conduct as they lined up for the extra point. Didn't see what happened. It had to be verbal. There wasn't any pushing. And then immediately afterwards, Sioux City hits a player way late, takes off the helmet, goes after him. No flag. So that's what you get in Sioux City. Omaha knows that coming in. And we'll have to keep their composure here. Connery's going to probably put this over the wall. He does. He knows he has the personal foul in the bank. So that will spot the ball at the 25 and then mark the penalty off. And Omaha will start at the 12 and a half yard line. So half the distance on the unsportsmanlike penalty in the bank. Puts it at the 12 and a half yard line. And that is where Omaha will start. Now trailing by five, 5.41 to go. First down for the beef. 
connecting on a fourth down and five for a touchdown. 35-yard touchdown in their last drive. Starting at the 12 and a half, handoff is to Darden, dancing 15, 20, out near the first down marker. He got nearly 10, will they give him all 10? They do, it's a first down, they'll move the chains. We go under five minutes to go running clock in indoor football. Omaha back on the ball. First and 10, the ball is at the 22, their own 22. Trips to the right side for Andrew Jackson. Darden stays in the game in the pistol formation for the beef. Men in motion, Darden on the handoff, ball's on the ground again, Sioux City has it, can you believe it? And uh, Omaha with their second turnover. Second fumble lost. They had lost four fumbles coming into the night. And they're going to say that he was never contacted and ran that thing into the end zone. And I would have to say that I'd agree with them, but I thought there was whistles blowing it dead. No call was made on the field. Challenge flags on the field already from Sioux City. I don't. So they said that they felt that the player gave himself up even though he immediately got up and ran. So another rule invented in Sioux City. We see this here all the time. This, You want new rules. This is the place for new rules and we got a new one there. And that one goes against Sioux City. Translation is we messed that play up. It should be a touchdown. Anyways. First down and 10. It's at the 19-yard line. That's where Sioux City will start. They're trying to add to a five-point lead. They're trying to take advantage of another Omaha turnover. Omaha's coughed it up twice. Jet sweep, tackle behind the line of scrimmage. Not fooled that time as they handed it off to Fred Bruno. Carl Bivens gets the ball, or gets a tackle, and a loss of about four yards. Huge play and drive here for Sioux City. They, remember, won the coin toss, so they'll get the ball first to start the second half. So five-point lead if they can get some points, eat the clock, take in the locker room and get the ball in the next Half first, we talked about that snowball in the pregame that Omaha needed to avoid. They're looking at some momentum shifting right now. Trips the right side for the Bandits on second and 14. Brown drops back. Here comes the blitz, dumps it off to Cass. Cass inside the 20, the 15, into the wall. There's a whistle down at the 14. Getting really late whistles on these plays here tonight. Players keep running as they should till they hear them, but it's leaving a lot of uh, indecision out there for those players. It is third down and five after the completion. The ball's at the 14-yard line. We're under three minutes to go. Both teams have all three timeouts. Five-point lead for the Bandits, the top-seeded Bandits, trying to take advantage of another Omaha fumble. Brown drops back. Now, flush out of the pocket, turns it upstream. Inside the 10, he's got a first down, he's down to the five. It'd be first down and goal for Sioux City. Clock continues to run. Sioux City taking their time, as you would expect. First and goal from the five yard line. Bandits looking to try to take command of this game going into the locker room in halftime. Lorenzo Brown will operate under center. Fred Bruno is the running back behind him. We have high motion and a little end reverse. Bruno hands it off back to Braden, but Omaha's not fooled as they tried to do an end around and actually end up losing a yard. It'll be second down and goal from the six. 
tell you what, with the way Bruno's been running the ball, I think you just give it to him and let him make something happen at this point as we approach 90 seconds left in the first quarter, or uh, first half. Top of the hour, reminder, you're listening to KOBM Omaha 94.5 FM, 1490 AM, and all across the Internet's MyBoomerRadio.com. Todd Walkenhorst, Nick Burris, back at Network Control in Omaha. as a beef trying to avoid trouble here. Second down, six for the Bandits. There's Bruno. He turns it upfield, as expected. He's hit into the boards at the two-yard line. Picks up four yards, be third and goal at the two. We've hit the one more or one minute warning here in Sioux City. Clock stops. Time out on the field. We'll be right back and finish up the first half. You're listening to Omaha Beef Football here on the Boomer Sports Network. Sometimes you take on an opponent with an unstoppable attack, and your only hope is a defense that's just as dominant. Club Car Wash is the official car wash of the Omaha Beef. Your vehicle gets destroyed by dirt and grime, so get the best defense in the league. Club Car Wash. Sign up for an unlimited membership and make sure your ride is always game day ready. With three locations in Omaha and more coming soon. Clubcarwash.com. Club Car Wash. Join the club. Football fans, are you an Inc. fan? Well, stop by and see our friends over at Eternal Tattoo and Body Piercing at any of their multiple facilities all across the Omaha and Lincoln metro areas. They are providing the cleanest facilities, which you know is important, especially in these times, and the best quality tattoo and body piercing services around this area. Check them out for yourself. Find a location, visit them online, Eternal Inc. I-N-K dot biz, B-I-Z today for more information. The official team chiropractor of the Omaha Beef, New Spine Chiropractic, has got your back, and we are offering a $29 new patient special that includes a full exam, complete adjustment, and free hydrotherapy massage. Again, all of that for just $29. We're open seven days a week, and walk-ins are always welcome. New Spine Chiropractic is for any lifestyle and any schedule. Visit us at www.newspinechiropractic.com today. The official team chiropractor of your Omaha Beef. One minute warning here in Sioux City. Omaha trailing 26-21. Sioux City has third and goal from the two-yard line looking to increase the lead going into halftime. If you're not familiar traditional indoor or traditional football rules timing-wise now for the last 60 seconds, both teams have all three timeouts as well. Bandits break the huddle. Third down and goal. They are two yards away from the end zone. Brown will operate once again out of underneath center. Bruno lined up on the near side. And the ball's on the ground, but Brown picks it right back up. Leans forward. Did he get there? It's a touchdown for Sioux City. Omaha thought they stopped him short. But they have called it a touchdown. We'll see if we get a review on this. Oh, his knee was down. His knee was down. Omaha needs to challenge that. You just saw it on the Jumbotrons up here. And it was interesting because the official who made the call was behind the play and not on the goal line. And the officials will go and review this. And I believe if they watch the same video that we're watching, they will see that Lorenzo Brown's knee was down before he got into the end zone, which would be a huge break for Omaha. And then a huge decision for Sioux City as it would be fourth and goal. I would think in this big of a game they would gamble with their running game and try to punch it in still but it's all going to be dependent on the referees here in Sioux City so you never know this is a drive that started after another Omaha fumble one that quite frankly it looked like Sioux City picked up and returned without contact 
and should have probably had a touchdown at that point. But the officials ruled something and decided that it wasn't. And made Sioux City have to earn it here on offense. We're under review. Initial call on the field. Touchdown for the Bandits. That would make it an 11-point lead if this holds with an extra point to come. As we're still waiting for this review. They're in the third quarter now down in Salina as the Liberty still lead 13 to nothing. And the officials come back out of the tunnel. Let's see what they have to say. And they have reversed the call. So as we thought, it's going to be fourth down and goal, but yeah, Omaha, or, uh, Omaha's going to see the goal line offense come in for Sioux City, and it's about a half yard out. You have to figure they're going to just try to punch it. Just try to go straight forward as Omaha is going to use a timeout to preserve some time if they get this ball back after a score or a stop. Should have taken that nine seconds ago. I don't know if they knew they started the clock. They are going to put some time back on the clock as they were trying to call that timeout. They didn't know that the clock had actually started back up out of the replay review. Omaha naturally wanted to stop that clock as soon as possible. Marvin Jones talked with the referee trying to see if he could get back up to 55 seconds, but I don't think they're going to give that to him. Instead, they'll leave it at 47. So out of the timeout, teams break the huddle. Reset it for you once again. It is fourth and goal from a half yard out. Sioux City trying to add to a five-point lead with 47 seconds left here in the first half. Sioux City gets the ball first in half number two as well. Omaha should have some time as we know they can score quick. They're going to have to. Goal line offense on fourth and goal. Brown under center, three backs behind him. Full house backfield splits him. Brown leans forward, touchdown. They did a lot of motion in the backfield. And Brown just uh, lunged forward as all the running backs were decoys on that play. And makes it 32 to 21 with 46 seconds to go until halftime. Sioux City is going to elect to go for two points this time. With the knowing that they're going to get the ball first of the second half, they're going to gamble right now to see if they can make it a two touchdown game. Men in motion out of the pistol. Brown keeps it once again, lunges for the goal line, he's in. Sioux City 34, Omaha 21, and Sioux City has taken advantage of another Omaha turnover and turned it into points. And have taken their largest lead of the game at 13 with 46 seconds remaining here in the first half of play. Sioux City wins here tonight. They will host Champions Bowl number seven next Saturday night, seven o'clock, right here at the Tyson Events Center. Against the winner of the Salina Liberty and Billings Outlaws. Right now, the Liberty are winning 13 to nothing. 
in the third quarter of play at the big pizza box in Salina. 46 seconds and two timeouts, still plenty of time as we know Omaha can score quickly. Andrew Jackson likes to go for the home run ball. He's going to have a couple opportunities right here. Starts with a good return, hopefully, for Omaha. Two men back deep, Deshaun Jones. A weight, high, end over end kick. It's fielded by Chris Perry in the end zone. He brings it out. Actually, that's uh, Trey Dudley Giles, near side, 10 yard line. Oh, and he is horse collared, high tackle. Underneath the face mask, <laughs> no call on the play. He's brought down. The helmet came off. Close lined underneath the face mask by Kevin Ransom. And stopped his tracks at the 11 yard line with 40 seconds to go. Watching this replay, yeah, that should have been a, a foul. But instead, first down and 10 for the beef at the 11. Two of their three touchdowns have come on one play drives. See how much patience they have here with 40 seconds to go and two timeouts. Empty backfield. Jackson wants to throw across the middle. It's complete. Good for first down out to the 22-yard line. Omaha is going to have to get back on the ball or use a timeout. They do elect to use timeout number two. Gain of 11 on the play. Actually, they stopped the clock to move the chains. I didn't know that was a rule. That's new. Huh. All right, why not? 34 seconds to go. Fresh set of downs for Omaha. Ball's at the 22. Same formation, men in motion. Jackson wants to throw, has a man into Sioux City territory down to the 15-yard line. That's Montero DeBose. And they stop the clock again to move the chains. Traditional timing rules were professional football timing rules, but I guess we're going to play college timing rules to Omaha's benefit here. Ball's at the 16-yard line, 23 seconds to go. Chains are set. Here we go. They start the clock. We're under 20 seconds. Ball's at the 16. First down. Complete once again inside the 10. And that's DeSalle who's back off the short-term IR. With the reception, it'll be first and goal for Omaha at the 9-yard, or correction, picked up 6 yards. It'll be second down and 4. As Omaha uses their second timeout with 12 seconds to go. So Omaha is nine yards out, trailing by 13. Omaha uses their second timeout. And they put a couple seconds back on the clock. They'll have 14 seconds to go until halftime. Salina now out in front of Billings, 20 to nothing in the third quarter. Yeah, Salina is looking for their third straight trip to the Champions Bowl. 0-2, they haven't claimed one yet. Looks like they're on their way to try number three. Out of the timeout, 14 seconds to go. Empty backfield, trips the near side. Ball's at the nine yard line. Jackson wants to throw. Into the end zone, it is in and out of the hands of Rashad Pargo, incomplete. He had Pargo, he put it on his hands, but he couldn't bring it in. It falls to the ground incomplete with 10 seconds to go. It's third down and three, the ball's at the nine, but Omaha needs to get in the end zone. They do have one timeout remaining. 34-21 Sioux City. Omaha trying to narrow the gap here before halftime. Same formation, three wide receivers to the right of Andrew Jackson. Flag on the play, and they stop it. And I think we're going to have a false start on Omaha. Nope. 
There's a timeout called by Sioux City, so I'm not sure why a penalty flag is thrown for a timeout. That's what Marvin Jones is now asking, if there's a penalty. And the officials are going to say there was not, apparently. Marvin Jones thought Sioux City's defense was illegal there offsides before the timeout, but hence the flag. But instead, they'll grant Sioux City their first timeout of the first half. And Omaha will reset once again. Third down three, 10 seconds to go. They're at the nine yard line. They trail by 13. Omaha leaves the same personnel on the field. Two men, high motion, Jackson, little passing, complete, it's a touchdown for Omaha with five seconds to go in the first half. Alexander Noble out of Urbana University. It's going to make this a one possession game most likely going into halftime. A huge score for Omaha. They needed that coming back down the field. Taking over with 44 seconds going to half, trailing by 13. It's a seven-point game. Jeremy Reynolds coming in for the extra point. Reynolds 75% on the year, puts this one up, and it is perfect. He is four for four on the night. And with five seconds to go in the first half, we have a six-point game here in the semifinal. 34 to 28. So to state the obvious, Omaha needs to prevent a huge return. Last kickoff return was returned for a touchdown. Omaha obviously needs to prevent that and then you have to make sure that you don't get a good enough return for Greg Connery to get a shot. One of the best kickers in indoor football. His long on the season is 46 yards, so you want to make sure Connery doesn't get a shot either with a couple seconds to go. Jeremy Reynolds needs to keep this in play, let the clock expire, and again, coverage is going to have to help him out. Prevent that big return. Reynolds puts the ball on the tee. Approaches it, puts his right foot into it. Squib kick, takes it in bounce. A big bounce at the goal line. Prohaska brings it in. Five-yard line out to the 10. Gets wrapped up. Time has expired in the first half. And what a first half as we got pushing and shoving away from the ball once again. But two quarters are in the books and a typical I-29 rivalry game. Sioux City 34, Omaha 28 winner goes to Champions Bowl number seven. We've reached halftime here in Sioux City. We'll be right back with. We are ready for half number two here in Sioux City. Winner. This semifinal matchup goes to the championship game. They call it Champions Bowl. Very catchy, right? It will be a week from tonight. It looks like it will be against uh, Salina Liberty, who will make their third straight appearance without so far winning one as they lead 20 to nothing as they go to the fourth quarter in Salina over the Billings Outlaws. The best team that money could buy, at least at one point, before the check started bouncing in the CIF. So, got 30 minutes of regulation to decide this one right here. These two teams are the only teams with championships remaining in the CIF, the Bandits were CIF champions back in 2015, the first year of the CIF, and they were runners-up. They played the championship game in the predecessor league, which was the CPIFL before they took out the P and the L, which stood for professional league, ironically enough. How about that, huh? A little trivia as we go to half number two. Sioux City won the coin toss. They deferred their option to half number two, and they will get the ball first with a six-point advantage. 
They've led by as many as 13 here tonight. We've had five lead changes in the first half. Just another I-29 rivalry matchup between these two teams, but this time a trip to the championship game is at stake. 62 points total in the first half. We expect a lot of action here in the second half. Appreciate you joining us tonight across the Boomer Sports Network. Jeremy Reynolds has the ball on the tee for Omaha. Omaha will be moving left to right on your Boomer radio dial here for quarter number three. Squib kick, hits it up, and Omaha's on it. Omaha has it. In essence, an onside kick. Whoa, they gave it to Sioux City. Omaha has the ball. They gave it to Sioux City. They pointed to Sioux City. Did they really mean that? Omaha thinks they have the ball. The officials say it's Sioux City. Omaha walked off with the ball. Both officials point to Sioux City. Omaha does not know both offenses are on the field right now. No, the officials just point in the wrong direction. They do not know which way to point. No. Both offenses are on the field. Both quarterbacks are on the field. Omaha thinks they have the ball. There's no question about it. That's how obvious it was. Both officials point to Sioux City. That's the mess we have right here, right now. Omaha's breaking the huddle thinking they have the ball. And the officials all pointed the wrong direction, set the chains up the wrong way. That's what happened here. Amazing. So we'll stop it so they can actually set it up. So Omaha, in essence, an onside kick to start the second half, trailing by six. Jeremy Reynolds hit it hard against an up man, and the kickoff coverage team fell on it. They'll start at the 11-yard line. Huge break for Omaha to start the second half. They trail by six. Here we go. High motion out of the slots. Andrew Jackson takes it. He's going to run. No, he's going to throw it at the last second. He looked for DeSalle. Tight coverage. No flag incomplete. Going back to that kick, if you're watching on the YouTubes, both officials pointed the direction of Sioux City having the ball. That was confusion. But they meant Omaha. Officiating 101 tonight. Second down and 10. Omaha breaks the huddle. 10 seconds on the play clock. Going to have to hurry up. Play clock's down to five. Here's the high motion, far side. Jackson, here comes a pass rush. He wants it all. He has a man. Rashad Bargo, touchdown, Omaha. Thirty-nine yards, Andrew Jackson to Rashad Pargo. They were teammates last year. They were teammates down in Salina. They were teammates in college. We are tied up at 34 with a point extra to come. Can you believe this start to the second half? Jeremy Reynolds with a chance to take the lead for Omaha. High snap to get it down. The kick is up, and he is a perfect 5 for 5 tonight as the defender comes in and actually hits the kicker. No flag. But Omaha has a lead with 12.47 to go in the third quarter after trailing by as many as 13 in the first half. Lead change number six of the night. It's Omaha 35, Sioux City 34. It all started off of that kickoff, hard kickoff into an up man, and Omaha recovered and turned it into points. Pretty good crowd sitting across from us here in the orange and black with the cowbells. We usually try to keep those out of the arena, but we snuck them in here tonight. We've actually got the, if you've ever been here at the Tyson Event Center, the far end zone's got seats at the upper level. They actually got the curtains on those and Got them roped off, which is probably good. Makes it more intimate here, but that's usually where they stick the Omaha fans. It's up there in the far corner, far away as possible, but 
those seats were not available here tonight. Here we go. Reynolds with the kickoff. This time he'll put it up in the air and over end. It's fielded five yards deep in the end zone. Prohaska brings it out. Has some room out to the five. Gets near the 10-yard line before being chased down. And good coverage now by Omaha. Is the momentum switching back the way of the beef? Sioux City will get their first possession of the second half trailing, which they did not expect. And they will start at their own eight-yard line with 12 and a half minutes to go here in the third quarter. Sioux City still in their huddle. Play clock is under 10. They're going to have to hurry it up here. Play clock's down to five. Still lining up. Three, two, one. That should be delay a game. Back judge thought about throwing the flag. He did not. Go figure. They run. Lorenzo Brown scrambles around. Picks up four or five. Back judge stared at that play clock. And failed to make that call. Second down and five. Ball is at the 13-yard line. Here's the handoff. Nope, they fake it to Prohaska. Brown keeps it. Omaha's not fooled. Gibson. On the tackle. Short gain on the play. Be third down and five. Opening drive, half number two, Sioux City trailing by one winner to the CIF championship game. Sioux City would host it. Omaha appears to have to go down to Salina. Here's the handoff. Third down, short gain on the play. Picks up two yards, but it's going to be fourth down for Sioux City. They tried a little jet sweep. Couldn't get it to open up. It'd be fourth down and three at their own 15. And they're not going to gamble at this part of the field when they got Greg Connery. They'll send him out. Fans don't like it. This is probably the right play. It'd be a 49-yard field goal if he goes for it. As long on the season is 42 yards. Place was down, kick is up. It's a long kick. It is short. It's going to be fielded at the backboard. Trey Dudley Giles out of the end zone. The 5, the 10, 15, 20. Flag behind the play as Dudley Giles returns us all the way, but they are going to bring it back, it appears. Trey Dudley Giles takes it from his end zone all the way down the field, but we got a trio of flags. And they're going to call an illegal block in the back. As we take a look at this again. Oh, that was in front of the shoulder pads. They're even slowing it down here. He, that was a clean block. But the second one may not have been, though. They call it blindside block. That's a new rule in the last few years. It's the, you didn't hit him in the back. You got in front of the pads, but if you can't see the player, you're going laterally. It's a personal foul. Popped open that return, and the touchdown is negated. So they mark off the penalty, and Omaha will start at their own four-yard line, but... They have a one-point lead with nine and a half minutes to go here in the third quarter. Two wideouts on the near side. Jackson puts them in the motion. Quick out to DeBose. Up the sideline, 10, 15. First down yardage. Picks up a half a dozen. And it'll be first down for Omaha at the 15-yard line.
Omaha now kind of taking their time. 35-34 lead. They flip the formation, trips to the left side. Two men in motion. Jackson has the ball, has some time. Dances around and tries to hit Montero DeBose. It is incomplete, but we have a flag on the play once again. And this is going to go against the Bandits, it appears. Defensive holding penalty against Sioux City will be a five-yard penalty. It will be an automatic first down. Actually, it could be a 10-yard penalty. And they move it out to midfield, the 25-yard line. So another first down. I think Sioux City's arguing that it should be a five-yard penalty. I believe it was. Offensive holding's 10, but... Minor point, complete Alexander Noble, four yards on the gain. Makes it second down and six. Omaha in Sioux City territory at the 21 yard line. 8.20 and counting here in the third quarter. Defending champions of the CIF Omaha trying to make it to the championship game. They lead 35-34. High motion right side for the beef. The ball's on the ground. The ball's on the ground. Sioux City has it. Now they're running it. And are they going to give them a touchdown? Nobody's doing anything on the field. There's no calls being made. It looked like there's a legal defense. Omaha thought that the defense was illegal, and that play never happened as they interfered with the snap. There's no call for the return. There's no call for the fumble. Let's see what they say. And they come back, and they do call now the legal defense. <laughs> A sloppy game from the Zebras here tonight in Sioux City. So five yards on the illegal defense penalty. He's going to make it second down and one as they spot the ball at the 16-yard line of the Bandits. Omaha breaks the huddle with 15. Seconds to go on the play clock. Second down and one. DeBose in motion. Handoff for the first time is to Jones, and he gets two yards for a first down. We got action behind the play, and a flag comes out. They're going to call this one on Omaha. Reginald Patrick, the left guard, blocking late, and now they're going to call a personal foul on Omaha. All the personal fouls tonight have gone on Omaha. Interestingly enough. Officials discuss it. And it will back up Omaha 15 yards when they had a first down. Also going to be the first unsportsmanlike on Patrick. Been seeing pushing and shoving all night. Flags coming out at interesting times, but I guess they decided that one was worth it. And I'm not sure why they're moving the chains all the way back. Here we go. So it will be a first down with the penalty based on the run with the late hit afterwards. So it'll be first down and 10, but they back it up to the Omaha 21. Jackson has it up the far sideline and obstructed was Noble. Couldn't get it up and the flag comes out. This is going to be pass interference and Omaha's going to get their 15 yards back. 
Down in Salina, Billings is on the board finally. It's 20 to six with 11-10 remaining at the Pizza Palace. Crowd disapproves as you can hear as we're midway through the third quarter. They mark off the 15 yards. It's down to the 14 yard line of Sioux City. First down for the Beef, trips to the right side for Andrew Jackson. He puts two of them in motion. Empty backfield and again tries to get noble tight coverage. Normally that would be a flag. They don't throw it there. It's incomplete. Under seven minutes left here in the third quarter. Winner advances the Champions Bowl, number seven. Omaha looking for their third appearance in the seven Champions Bowls. Sioux City looking for their second. They split the wide receivers, two on each side, and passes low, it's incomplete. And a lot of talking and pushing by Sioux City afterwards, no flag. Be third and ten for Omaha. Big third down. We talked about Omaha. Not a big fan of third downs. 36% completion percentage on the season on third down. They need ten yards right here. We're under six minutes left here in the third quarter. They break the huddle of ten seconds left on the play clock. They flank three out to the right side. Omaha's going to have to hurry it up to get the playoff. They'll get the snap off just in time. He looks up the near sideline, and it's complete. It's a touchdown, Alexander Noble once again. They've been battling hard man-to-man -man on that far side. Lots of pushing and shoving. Last time it was a pass interference penalty. This time Noble was able to get some separation and gets a pass brought in for a touchdown and Omaha's out in front by seven with the extra point to come. Kamar Greenhouse and Noble have been battling back and forth all night long and Noble gets it there. Jeremy Reynolds, six for six, he has a six pack of extra points and Omaha with their largest lead of the game, 42 to 34 with 453 remaining here in Sioux City. Timeout on the field. We are going to take it with them. What a game. It's the I-29 rivalry. What else would you expect? You're listening to Omaha Beef Professional Indoor Football on the Boomer Sports Network. At Rebath, we believe everyone should have a bathroom they love. Whether it's an update to your tub or shower, finding comfortable, safe aging solutions, or full custom bathroom remodels, we do it all and we handle the entire process from design to done. Get more than a room. Get a beautiful bathroom you love with Rebath. For special offers and to schedule your free in-home consultation, visit us at rebath.com or call 402-281-2390. Hey, you've got a car, but now we need to make it a cool car. One place to go in town, InPhase Car Audio. They've got you set up. You need an alarm, you need amplifiers, speakers, let people know that you're coming. Radar detectors, LED lighting, safety solutions, and more. If you want to add it to your car, they have it at InPhase Car Audio. Visit their website, InPhaseCarAudio.com, or even better yet, stop by the store. 134th and L Street, InPhaseCarAudio.com. Let's tackle electronic waste together. Cross Electronic Recycling takes anything with a cord, battery, or a motor and guarantees secure data destruction, proper handling, and disposal so your intellectual data is never compromised. Items are dismantled, sorted, and separated, and when possible, refurbished and repaired, helping the less fortunate through Cross Training Center. Let's tackle electronic waste together with secure data destruction at Cross Electronic Recycling. Find us at CrossRecycling.com. That's CrossRecycling.com.
4.53 remaining here in quarter number three. Omaha's out in front by eight, 42-34. Trip to the CIF championship game is on the line. Omaha's having a heck of a third quarter. They started off with that basically onside kick. They've scored a couple touchdowns as Reynolds puts it in the back corner, and it goes in the first row. He did not want to do that. We have a flag behind the play. And we'll see what the call is. So Omaha's offsides on the kickoff. And they had 10 yards for the offsides. And so Sioux City will start at the 15 yard line. I guess offsides are 10 yard penalties now. Here's a handoff on first down, dances around, picks up a yard or two. And they are hitting each other right now. Omaha's got to be careful that they don't get another personal foul as they seem to be going all against the beef here tonight. Gain of two, second down and eight. The ball's at the 13 of Omaha. Salina late score, 58 seconds to go down there. They lead 26 to six, so they are punching their ticket for their third straight Champions Bowl. Just about final there. Trips the right side for Sioux City. Brown has time, looks around, can't find anybody. Now throws it nearly intercepted. Right into the bread basket. Of a defensive back for Omaha. Brandon Holmes couldn't bring it in. Near disaster for Sioux City. Instead, third down and eight. Clock continues to run. It's approaching the three minute mark here in the third quarter. High motion on the right side. They were off sides, no flag. And then throws, the end zone's broken up. Taylor Hawkins gets a hand on it. We're going to have fourth down and eight. Wide receivers, a good yard over the line of scrimmage at the snap. No flag on the play. But now Sioux City is going to have a big fourth down. It's fourth down and eight. I think they're going to kick the field goal. There's some confusion whether the kicking team's going to come on. Now they're going to send the kicker back. So trailing by eight, they think they need touchdowns. They're feeling the pressure. They're going to leave the offense on the field. They have not scored here in the second half. Getting outscored 14 to nothing here in the second half. Play clock's down to five, down to four, down to three. Will they get it off in time? Down to two, down to one, zero. They'll let it go, of course. Brown looks, and it's picked off. It's intercepted. Back the other way. Holmes got it this time. 15. 20-yard line, and Brandon Holmes comes up with the interception after dropping the one before, and the defense comes up big with 2.05 remaining here in the third quarter and an eight-point lead. Oh, boy. It was going to be incomplete, and Omaha's going to take it over anyways, but he... Holmes was able to bring it in for his first interception of the season, run it back out, and Omaha has good field position at their own 20-yard line with 2.05 remaining here in the third quarter, trying to add to an eight-point lead. It's their largest lead of the night. Remember, Omaha led very late in the game on April 30th, but a chaotic fourth quarter led to a Sioux City victory. We have a timeout on the field. We'll take it with them. Omaha 42, Sioux City 34, Beef Professional Football right here on the Boomer Sports Network. 
Imagine offers a variety of advanced procedures unavailable at any other clinic in Nebraska. Their board-certified physicians perform thousands of procedures each year in teaching clinics around the world. Consultations are free and there are no hidden fees. Everything is included in the price on your proposal. Our friendly bilingual team works hard to make you feel welcome and comfortable. Call today 402-509-8473 or online at omahaliposuction.com to schedule your free consultation. State Farm Insurance agent Amanda Spencer is not only a proud sponsor of the Omaha Beef, but also the proud sponsor of the honorary family of the game at all Omaha Beef home games that recognizes those who give back to our community. Amanda and her staff serve the entire states of Nebraska and Iowa, so call her today at 402-346-5553 for a free quote on your car, home, renters, life, or business insurance needs. You can also visit her website at aspencerinsurance.com. State Farm agent Amanda Spencer. Proud sponsor of your Omaha beef. Beyond Golf, located at 12040 McDermott Plaza in La Vista, opened its doors in 2009 in an effort to bridge the long seasonal gap to Midwest golfers. In 2012, the first major addition was our kitchen, and we haven't looked back since. Beyond Golf features indoor golf on some of the world's most famous courses. Enjoy a round of golf in a laid-back atmosphere complete with a full bar, gourmet food menu, and big screen TVs. Book your tea time online or drop in for one of our craft cocktails, craft beer on draft, or delicious food items. Visit our website at www.beyondgolf.com or by calling us at 402-916-4727. The 48th edition of the I-29 rivalry. Sioux City leads the series 24 games to 23 games. That's how close this series has been over 20-plus years. Only three times have this team's met in the playoffs. This is the third time Omaha has won both of the previous contests in the playoffs, including last year in Ralston. Big turn over by the defense. They start at the 20-yard line of Omaha with 2.05 to go. Can they add to the eight-point lead? Men in motion. Hand off to Sean Jones up the middle into Sioux City territory. He has a half a dozen. He'll be second down and four. Deshaun Jones hasn't seen much of action in the first three quarters of this game. Just his second carry of the night right there as he picks up six. Omaha last few seasons definitely been a pass-happy team. Let's see if they can settle things down a little bit. Pistol formation with Jones in the backfield. They'll pitch it out to him. Turns a corner. Has a near first down. It's going to be just short. Picks up three yards. It's going to be third down and one or two. So another big third down for Omaha again. Not too good at third downs this year, but needs two yards right here. Flip the formation, trips to the left side. They'll give it to Jones to try the left side. He has a first down, bounces off a defender. He's down to the 15, and he gets down. Boy, you saw him fine for those extra yards. We've seen balls come loose tonight for Omaha when that happens, but he was able to hang on, and it's a first down for the Beef down to the 15-yard line. 30 seconds to go. Omaha will have to run at least one more play here. In the third quarter, they break the huddle. Flip the formation back to the near side. Trips to the right of Andrew Jackson. He puts two in motion. They'll give it to Jones again. Straight up the middle to the 10. Spins around. He fights. They blow him down at the nine-yard line. He picks up six more. And then gets thrown in the end zone after the play. His helmet is off. It was ripped off. He gets thrown into the end zone. And no flags. (laughs) Time's expired in the first three quarters here in Sioux City. We go to quarter number four. The Beef are out in front and drive. And you're listening to Omaha Beef Professional Indoor Football right here on the Boomer Sports Network. Craft Axe Throwing creates memorable experiences for everyone. Friends and family events, staff outings, or parties. Book a lane today by calling 402-313-8240 or visit our website at craftaxethrowing.com today and get in on the action. That's Craft Axe Throwing, official partner of the Omaha Beef. 
Imagine offers a variety of advanced procedures unavailable at any other clinic in Nebraska. Their board-certified physicians perform thousands of procedures each year in teaching clinics around the world. Consultations are free and there are no hidden fees. Everything is included in the price on your proposal. Our friendly bilingual team works hard to make you feel welcome and comfortable. Call today 402-509-8473 or online at omahaliposuction.com to schedule your free consultation. Omaha ended Sioux City season last season in the playoffs. 40 to 39. Omaha ended the season before that for Sioux City is the 2019 season before COVID. Is a final regular season game where the winner went to the playoffs. Omaha won that one also at Ralston Arena. Sioux City's well aware that Omaha would like to do it for the third straight season ending their arch rival season. They are 15 minutes away from doing that. It's 42 to 34. Omaha has second down and four. They are at the Sioux City nine yard line, trying to put some distance between them and the Bandits. This has been their largest lead of the night at eight points. Here's a motion. Deshaun Jones once again, back up the middle. They're ready this time though. He picks up two yards, it's gonna be third down. And four for Omaha. You have Jeremy Reynolds who's been having a pretty good night. Be about 23 yard field goal from here. That would make it an 11 point game. So two possessions, so be interesting to see what Omaha decides if they're not able to convert. It should be fourth down, or a third down, excuse me. Third down, long three. Two wideouts to the far side, one on the near side. Far side in motion. They looked off sides. They didn't throw the flag. Jackson dances around. He's brought down. He's sacked. He loses six yards. And they're going to kick, but they just made it more difficult for Jeremy Reynolds. This will be a 28-yard field goal attempt. Reynolds, 6 for 8 on the season, as long as 41 yards, and that was right here in this building on April 30th. A huge kick to try to make this a two-possession game here in the fourth quarter. Deshaun Jones is the holder. Reynolds awaits, falls down, kick is up, and it is wide to the left. So Omaha misses a golden opportunity to try to take control of this game, but this ball is going to come back down to the five-yard line as that ball went over the back wall. Although, the, he's bringing it out to the 25. Where is he doing? This ball should be at the five once it's spotted. There we go. It's hard to remember all the rules. So Sioux City gets a defensive stop. They still trail by eight. 13-27 remaining. They will start at their own five-yard line. Salina and Billings has gone final. Salina is victorious 26-14. So Sioux City wins will come up here for Champions Bowl 7. If Omaha wins, it's a rematch of last year's Champions Bowl in Salina next Saturday night. Jet sweep, Fred Bruno. Five yards into the dasher board at the 10-yard line. It'll be second down and five. Sioux City has not scored in the second half after putting 34 points up in half number one. Omaha, 14 points in the third quarter, take the lead. Second down and five, two wide outs left side, they go in motion, the handoff is to Prohaska. He's got a little bit of room, he's got a first down, he's got six yards, it's out to the 16 yard line. First down for Sioux City. 
And this game is going to go down to the wire once again, it would appear. We've seen so many times over the years between these two teams. Games just like this. This time it's for a trip to the CIF championship game. First and 10 for the Bandits. Brown now will go under center. Two wideouts left side, puts him into motion, tries to step the jet sweep. It's a fake, goes downfield. We have a flag, it's complete. It's a touchdown. It's a touchdown for Sioux City. Let's check the flag. Omaha says it's going against the Bandits. Nope, illegal defense on Omaha, and the Bandits are two points away from tying this one back up. Obvious two-point conversion coming after the touchdown reception by Damon Powell. Out of the University of Iowa. So Bandits lining up for the two-point conversion to tie the game up. The Bandits went under center on first down and went deep. Faked that jet sweep in the backfield. It was a mirage. Except the play downfield. Here's the two-point conversion. Bruno in motion. Prohaska out to the left side. Brown dances around. He finds a man in the end zone, and it's good. And we are tied up at 42, and we got a flag that came out late. Who are they going to call this on? Who's involved down there? Omaha's already got a couple unsportsmanlike. They've all been going against Omaha tonight. Let's see who they're going to call this one on. But either way, we are tied up at 42. Officials discussing this penalty. Remember, two unsportsmanlike conduct penalties get you ejected, not just from this game, but the next one, too. That would put them out for a championship game. Let's see. So that one goes on Jordan Jones. That's his first unsportsmanlike, and Omaha has three players now with unsportsmanlike penalties. Again, any of them gets a second, they're ejected. There's been pushing and shoving all night. We can't say this enough. And every single penalty for personal fouls on sportsmanlike conduct has been flagged on Omaha. So, that's how it goes when you're on the road. We are deadlocked at 42. What a game here in Sioux City. Sioux City scoring for the first time in the second half and completed the two-point conversion. The winner will take on the Salina Liberty Champions Bowl 7. That will be Saturday night. June 25th, week from tonight. Connery lines it up. High end over end kick. He's got that personal foul on the bank. He'll put it over the wall, which will have Omaha start at their own 12 and a half yard line. Eight penalties for 70 or 71 yards against Omaha, four for 39 against Sioux City. But they've had some big ones. Some turnovers tonight, two fumbles lost. 
and yet still tied up here tonight against the Bandits on the road. What a semifinal matchup here at the Tyson Event Center. Omaha empty backfield. They'll put two wide receivers on each side of Andrew Jackson. Jackson drops back. Blitz is coming, has a man, is complete. Norman Darden out to the 17-yard line, good for five yards. As we're under 11 minutes left here in regulation. Second down and five for the beef. Two wide outs each side again for Omaha. This is their base formation. High motion out of the slot. Jackson voids the blitz. Looking again for Noble. And a lot of contact downfield. No flags. It's incomplete. Forgot to tell you at the top of the hour is the KOBM Omaha. 94.5 FM, 1490 AM. And on myboomerradio.com. Appreciate you joining us. Big ch- Semi-final game in Champions Indoor Football here tonight at the Tyson Event Center. Todd Walkenhorst here with you. Nick Burris back at network control. Third down and five for Omaha. They're at their own 17-yard line. We're under 10 minutes left in regulation. We're deadlocked at 42. Trips to the right side for the beef. You hear the crowd alive here at the Tyson. Dumped off. It's complete. First down for Omaha into Sioux City territory. Down to the 24-yard line. Pickup of seven yards on the completion. And a new set of downs for Omaha. You can feel the tension here in this building. They've actually got most of the Omaha people on the far side and the Sioux City people on the near side. Kind of like a high school game. Near side is rocking right now. First to 10, Omaha at the 24. Jackson downfield. Pargo, he overthrows him incomplete. Got a flag away. Deshaun Jones does not have a helmet on. I think they're finally going to get a penalty against the Bandits. Let's see what they call. That's a personal foul. It's be 15 yards. And they do get it. It's a personal foul face mask, finally. And that'll be a half the distance foul. Which is going to move it down to the 12-yard line. Be first down for Omaha. We're under nine minutes left in regulation. Omaha trying to break the tie. Winner takes on the Salina Liberty for the CIF Championship next Saturday night. They stack the near side with wide receivers. Jackson puts two in motion. He completes it. It's to DeBose. DeBose is down to the six. Boy, they're letting him play a long time after contact. Six yards on first down makes it second down and four. Omaha is driving after Sioux City tied it up in their last possession with a touchdown and a two-point conversion. Both teams, if you're looking ahead, have all three of their timeouts left. Omaha breaks the huddle with 15 left on the play clock. Jackson still sent his receivers. Play clock's under 10. Marvin Jones is watching it. High motion. Jackson has a snap. Drops back, avoids the pressure, and throws it into the ground. It's incomplete. No whistle. There's no whistle. They're going to allow this to play out like it's a fumble. And Sioux City's running all the way back. This is undoubtedly a forward pass that the officials just didn't make a call on. I assume they're going to let it go to replay. They're obviously going to review it. Randy Hagedorn's already calling everybody back but they did not make a call on the field, I think intentionally so they could review it. And I will say if this call stands, it's going to be one, (laughs) they're going to be talking about an indoor football for a long, long time. It's pretty obvious Jackson was up in the pocket and threw the ball forward. 
I mean, there was arm motion as that ball went forward and into the ground. So the officials are discussing it. Let's see what they decide. Now they say that the ruling on the field was an incomplete pass, which is interesting because nobody actually ruled that on the field, and now they'll review it. If the ruling on the field was an incomplete pass, the play was over and could not be returned. So if they are reviewing this play now, at best, they could give the ball to Sioux City on a fumble, but the play would be over because it was called on the field an incomplete pass. That's what the rules would say, but we have seen a lot of interesting interpretations of rules over the years in this venue. And we don't mean to sound like we're ragging on the officiating, but I don't want to say it's bad. It's just really not good. So they're reviewing it, and in the middle of everything else, it stops the play, stops the momentum, and this should not take long. When we come back, there'll be 7.35 remaining here in the fourth quarter either way. And they have returned. And they're talking to the head coach for Sioux City. This is going to go the way of Omaha, it appears. And that was an incomplete pass, which was obvious from the get-go and wasted a lot of time and energy there to get back to where we're at. So it's going to be third down and four still. as we have the long stoppage on the field. They start the play clock, or start the game clock again. We're midway through the fourth quarter. Omaha has third down and four, trying to get back out in front. Two wideouts on each side, empty backfield for Andrew Jackson. High motion in the slots, good snap. Jackson drops back, a little pass, it's overthrown. He had his man, it was DeSalle in the end zone. And it was just too high, he had him. And missed him. And they'll send Jeremy Reynolds out to try to take the lead. Jeremy Reynolds is Six for six on extra points, but he is 0 for 1 on field goals here tonight. Six for nine on the season in field goals. This one will be a 20-yard attempt. Placement's down, it's blocked. It's blocked, he goes in the wall. Goes in the wall, and that's where it will be dead. So Omaha with a golden opportunity in the red zone. Comes up empty, and with 6.26 remain in regulation, Sioux City is going to have a chance to start at their own five-yard line. A blocked field goal, if you remember, that's how Omaha won the championship last year in Salina at the end of the game as Salina tried to the game-winning field goal with a couple seconds left. Omaha blocked that to preserve their 40-39 victory in the championship game. A blocked field goal here by the Bandits keep this game tied at 42. So Bandits start their own five-yard line. Clock approaching six minutes remaining here in regulation. Winner takes on the Sioux City Liberty next Saturday night. Location to be determined. Trips to right side. Lorenzo Brown goes under center. 
little jet sweep, Bruno. Bruno has it, picks up a yard. Omaha's all over it. Sioux City over the years, if you're familiar with this offense, uh, a lot of jet sweeps previously and a lot of kind of option football. They put those extra running backs up and a lot of misdirection. We've seen a lot less of it this year with Lorenzo Brown at quarterback for Sioux City, but still got a few of those plays in their arsenal. Second down and nine for Sioux City. Five and a half to go in regulation. He'll go back to the pistol formation. He puts two in motion. Here's a throw. Bruno complete out to the 11-yard line. The ball was low. He had to go down and get it and couldn't get any yards after the catch. Pick up a five yards. It'll be third down and four. We're under five minutes to go here in regulation. Omaha 42, Sioux City 42, winner. Moves on to the championship game. Champions indoor football. Sioux City, the top seed. Omaha is the defending CIF champs. They're natural rivals, and it's boiling to a head here tonight. Third down and four. We've got movement before, and this is going to be offsides on the beef. Oh, and then they throw one late on Omaha as well. And then we got another one, and that might be fortunate for Omaha that I think we're going to have. Offsetting personal fouls now instead of the free 15 yards for Sioux City. So if that's how it goes down, it's going to be a break for Omaha and a boneheaded play for Sioux City. First, we're going to have the offsides on the beef, it appears. That'll be a first down for the Bandits, but then... Sioux City was poised to get an extra 15 yards, which would put him in field goal position at the very least, but I think we're going to have offsetting penalties. There are four flags down on the field. Let's let them sort it out. Marvin Jones back on the field reminding his players to keep their cool, especially Gibson Zaya, who already has a personal foul. He's telling them, you cannot get ejected from this game and of course you'd be ejected from the next as well if Omaha were to advance. So the referee convention looks like it's wrapping up. Let's see what Randy Hagedorn has to tell us. Exactly as we summarized in a few seconds, they took four minutes to figure out. And it'll be an offsides marked off against Omaha and then offsetting personal fouls. Now Omaha has four players that are carrying an unsportsmanlike penalty. Again, all four of them got to make sure they don't get their second and avoid ejection. Officials trying to figure out where the ball should be. It should be at the 16-yard line. It should be a first down for Sioux City. There's 431 remaining in regulation as they sort this out. Chains are in place. Yeah. We're ready to go. They start the game clock, and we're back in business. Well, they don't start the game clock. It should be started. There it goes. Ten seconds too late. All right, pistol formation for the Bandits. Two wideouts on the near side, one on the far side. First down and ten from the 16-yard line. Omaha's offsides again. Free play for Sioux City. They connect. It's take advantage. Powell down to the 15-yard line. Lorenzo Brown takes advantage of the offsides. 
Omaha a little aggressive, comes out of their stance early. They let the play go and uh, Lorenzo Brown made Omaha pay. So Sioux City now in scoring position down to the 14 yard line of the beef as they have another first down and they start the clock back up as we approach the four minute mark. Remember this, we saw 26 points after the one minute warning last time these two teams played. So who knows what's gonna happen. Here's the handoff, a little dancing around in the backfield and a gain of two yards. Be second down and eight. Bandits would love to use all the clock and pop it in the end zone at best. At worst, let Greg Connery try to take the lead. They're taking their time now before they break the huddle. They'll break the huddle with 13 seconds left on the play clock. 3.20. Remaining here in regulation. Tied at 42, Lorenzo Brown under center. Kamal Cass in the backfield, a little jet sweep, Omaha's ready. Fred Bruno couldn't find any room. In fact, he loses three yards. It'll be third down and 10. The veteran, Fred Bruno. Out of Wayne State, he's played a lot of football up here over the years. He's been successful going downhill but they've tried that jet sweep with them a few times and Omaha's not fallen for it when they go laterally 245 and counting in regulation third down and 10 for the bandits pistol formation Kamal Cass back with Lorenzo Brown Bruno goes in motion they're gonna throw Brown looks and it's complete to the 10 into the wall at the nine yard line, but it's gonna be fourth down. What are the Bandits gonna do? Here comes Greg Connery. He wants to take the lead. It looks like they're gonna let him. So Omaha's gonna take a timeout and preserve that clock for when they get the ball back. 2.06 remaining in regulation. Winner goes to the championship game. We are tied at 42. Time out. We'll be right back. You're listening to Omaha Beef Professional Indoor Football here on the Boomer Sports Network. Bird dogging is when someone is focused like a laser to find the problem and fix it. Like the technicians at Titanium HVAC. If there's a problem with your HVAC system, they will find it and fix it. Titanium HVAC. Honesty and quality come standard. TitaniumOmaha.com. Sioux City and Omaha deadlocked at 42. Greg Connery set to try to break the tie on fourth down. This will be a 21 yard field goal attempt for the veteran kicker. Placement's down and uh, it's between the uprights but I don't think that ball was ready for play. We heard whistles. They were not lined up yet. Sioux City wants a legal defense. And the referee confirms, just as I thought, the ball was never blown into play. As Sioux City tried to get the snap off quickly. They thought they'd get a legal defense on it. Bandits are arguing. They want a legal defense and a first down on the penalty. All the coaches are on the field and arguing. Apparently that's not a penalty. And another, uh, another what you would categorize as officiate mechanics issue and the bandits are besides themselves. So remember, Connery also made that kick, so he's gonna have to do it again. Ball's in play now. 
as Connery will try again from 22 yards out to give the Bandits a lead. Connery waits a snap, low snap, puts the kick up, and he makes it again. 2.03 remaining here in regulation. The Bandits are back out in front, 45-42. to So we've seen our seventh lead change of the night. Bandits hang on. They host Champions Bowl. Seven next week against Salina. Omaha takes the lead and wins the game. They will travel down to Liberty for a rematch of last year's epic championship game. If that were to occur, that would be on the Boomer Sports Network next Saturday night, 6.35 kickoff time from Salina, Kansas. But 2.02 left to play here in regulation in Sioux City. It's a lot of time in indoor football. Both teams have timeouts remaining. Sioux City has three. Omaha has two. Trey Dudley Giles along with Sean Jones await the kickoff from Connery. Here we go. Connery puts it into play. Bouncing kick to be fielded by Giles at the 5. Looks for a blocker, the 10. Can't find one. Brought down at the 11. Return did not get set up in front of him, and he couldn't find a lane. Only picks up 5 yards on the return, making 6 yards, and they spot at the 11-yard line. So, 155 to go. Beef trail by 3. Jeremy Reynolds, 6 for 6 on extra points, but 0 for 2 on field goals. They trail by a field goal. Sioux City trying to get by the beef and advance in the playoffs. Omaha's ended their season the last two seasons. They start the game clock. 90 seconds left in regulation. Jackson puts everybody into play. Two wideouts on each side. They put Pargo in motion. Jackson drops back, looks downfield, complete. Norman Darden out to the 20. Near first down, it will be good for 10 yards. They move the chains. Clock continues to run. I think Omaha is fine with uh, living or dying on this possession. They're going to have to snap it quick to get one off before the one-minute warning. Let's see if they do. They do with a second left. Jackson throws. It's complete to the 25 into Bandit's territory. Still on his feet. Darden down to the 15-yard line. And Omaha is 15 yards away with 52 seconds left as we've hit the one-minute warning here at the Tyson Event Center. Do not go away. 52 seconds remaining. Winner goes to the title game. You're listening to Omaha Beef Professional Indoor Football here on the Boomer Sports Network. At Rebath, we believe everyone should have a bathroom they love. Whether it's an update to your tub or shower, finding comfortable, safe aging solutions, or full custom bathroom remodels, we do it all. And we handle the entire process from design to done. Get more than a room. Get a beautiful bathroom you love with Rebath. For special offers and to schedule your free in-home consultation, visit us at rebath.com or call 402-281-2390. These two rivals only played twice this year, only once in the regular season. Both games up here in Sioux City in the I-29 rivalry, but you put those two games together and boy, what some amazing football we have seen between 21 late changes in two games and tons of huge plays and situations being made. Omaha trails by three, 45-42, 52 seconds left at regulation. They have first down at the Sioux City 15-yard line. Two wideouts on each side. Rashad Pargo goes in motion with DeSalle. Jackson. Wants to keep it. Design quarterback run. He picks up four yards down to the 11-yard line. 
clock is running under 40 seconds. Omaha looks like they're just trying to make sure Sioux City has no time left. They need to hurry up. We're under 30 seconds left in regulation. Trips to the near side. Omaha's going to go for the end zone. Jackson has a pass rush, gets out of it. He's running to the five, and he's brought down at the two. The longest run for Andrew Jackson this year was nine yards, and it's going to be first and goal for Omaha. What a time to become a runner. Back-to-back plays for Andrew Jackson. 15 seconds remaining here in Sioux City. Omaha trails by three. They have first and goal at the two-yard line. Sioux City is going to use their first time out to talk about it. Can Omaha pull off the comeback and get a spot at Champions Bowl 7 to defend their league title in a rematch against the Salina Liberty? They have two timeouts, so they can throw the ball. They can run the ball. What will Marvin Jones and Andrew Jackson decide to do? What a finish here tonight at the Tyson's Event Center. Omaha gets the win. They would tie up the all-time series between these two uh, teams at 24 wins apiece. The two longest indoor football teams in the country are battling for a position in the CIF title game, and Omaha is two yards away with 15 seconds left. But Omaha's going to run. Empty backfield. Jackson out of the gun. Puts the men in motion. Little dump pass, and it's, oh, pass noble, but there's a flag on the play. We're going to have pass interference on Greenhouse on the coverage. Two seconds came off the clock. And it will move the ball half the distance to the goal. Should put it at the one. Here's a call. As you can probably hear, the call went against the Bandits. And the defensive coordinator just threw the flag back at the official. He should be ejected and another personal foul. Now they're talking about that. They're huddled up. As they lose their composure here, see if they do anything. They called it a sideline warning, (laughs) so it's no foul. So they move the ball. I don't think they actually spotted that after the penalty. Ball still at the two-yard line. First to goal for Omaha. 13 seconds to go. Jones in the backfield. We've got movement. This is a illegal defense, and they'll call it dead. It's against Sioux City once again. Sioux City wants to say Omaha had a legal procedure. Officials will discuss. We've had a lot of officiating discussions and lengthy ones here tonight. Everybody's on the edge of the seat. Here we go. So offsides on the Bandits. Move it another yard closer. Omaha is one yard out. Andrew Jackson has six rushing touchdowns, and this is about the distance that they do it. They just put him under center. And with two timeouts, I'm not sure why you wouldn't just do that right here and lean him forward. 
the big six foot two, 225 pounder. He is going to line up under center with Jones in the backfield behind him. 13 seconds to go in regulation. Can Omaha get a touchdown? Jackson under center. Ball snap. He leads forward. We got flag on the play. He is in the end zone. It's a touchdown for Omaha. Let's check the flags. Andrew Jackson looks like he's had the quarterback keeper for the touchdown. And it's a legal defense on Sioux City. That will be declined. And Omaha has taken the lead with 11 seconds to go in regulation. 48 to 45, the Jeremy Reynolds extra point to come. Lead change number eight tonight. And now they're gonna review the play. <laughs> well, don't get excited yet, B fans, we're in Sioux City. One thing they may want to review is he was pushing forward and how only two seconds went off the clock is a little beyond me. We'll see if they review that. If they decide that Omaha did not score, and I'm not sure how they could, to be honest with you, it'd have to be indisputable evidence, and he ended up in the end zone. Can't review the forward progress. That's a judgment call. But if, again, they come up with a way, Omaha's going to have it probably just an inch outside the goal line and could do it again. It's probably better for Sioux City to have this stand so they could get one shot back. Now, remember, again, this was two teams that met April 30th. 26 points were scored after the one-minute warning, including kickoff returns. So this game is not over. Ruling stands. It's a touchdown for Andrew Jackson. 48-45, Omaha out in front. 11 ticks left in regulation. Jeremy Reynolds for the extra point. Sean Jones is the holder. Good snap. Kick is up. It's off the crossbar. Hits the net and went in. Jeremy Reynolds, 7-4-7 seven, seven on extra points. And Omaha leads by four. A big extra point. He's going to force Sioux City to get a touchdown. And Irv Strobing, you could see the look on his face. I talked to him earlier this week. 9-1 and one coming into the game. First round by playing really good football and I talked to him and all he could talk about was how Omaha has ended their last two seasons that was on their mind it was the hurdle that they had to clear and here they are facing a four-point deficit now at home with 11 seconds to go Omaha Looking to advance to the CIF championship game as defending champions and do what they did a year ago down at the Tony's Pizza Event Center. And that's defeat the Salina Liberty on their home turf. But we've seen Sioux City make big plays and returns. We've seen them kick off or return, uh, excuse me, return a kickoff here tonight for a touchdown. Fred Bruno back with Powell. Two big explosive players. Fred Bruno had that late touchdown that took the lead in the first game on April 30th. So Omaha needs some good coverage right here on kickoff. Jeremy Reynolds needs to end, aim for a sidewall, try to prevent a return. Reynolds puts it in play. It's a bouncing kick. It's going to take a big bounce. Brutal field at the 4, the 5, the 10, the 15. Head of steam out to the 20. 
out to the 24-yard line as they keep pushing. And there's going to be five seconds to go. And Sioux City is going to have one shot, maybe two, but at least one to throw it downfield in the end zone. Sioux City needs 26 yards in five seconds. They do have two timeouts. They trail by four. Winner advances to the championship game to take on the Salina Liberty. Omaha needs to play a little prevent. Defensive backs are saying keep the play in front of you. And they hope it takes five seconds. Brown has Prohaska in the backfield for blocking. Three wide receivers set for Sioux City. This is for the game. Two wideouts, high motion, offsides. They blow it dead. I think Sioux City did. They went over the line early. And it's going to back them up five yards. So they need 31 yards now instead of 26 for the touchdown. Everybody on their feet at the Tyson Event Center. It all comes down to this. Between the heated I-29 rivals, the Sioux City Bandits, the Omaha Beef, the game's been everything we could ask for. What a playoff game here tonight in the CIF. Same personnel. They've got a design play they want to use here. Five seconds to go, and the play clock was down to zero. Lorenzo Brown will use a timeout, which they did have two left, so not a big deal there. And they will talk about it. Interestingly enough, Sioux City is keeping Prohaska in the game in the backfield. Unless he's some sort of trick play that they're going to try to just do something short. He's probably in there for protection. In a situation where Omaha's probably not going to rush the quarterback. They're going to play back. So you take away a wide receiver option. You have three wide receivers. Unless, again, they're going to try something short. Maybe a hook and lateral play. We'll find out. Keep an eye on him. Ball's at the Sioux City 19-yard line. Five seconds to go. Omaha trying to hang on and defend their title next week. They flip the formation now. And now they take Prohaska and line him out as a wide receiver. All four wide receivers are going to be on the right side at Omaha. Didn't like what they see and defensively takes a timeout so they can talk about the, the new look they just saw. So Marvin Jones talks to his defense along with Adam Loftus. Reminding those guys again, you just got to make sure they don't score. You got to make sure they don't score and gain 31 yards. Anything less will end up in a victory. Don't make the big play. You don't need to try to make an interception. Don't let coverage get blown. Teams break the huddles. We'll try this once again. Five seconds to go. It's at the 19-yard line of Sioux City. They need a touchdown. Shot Pargo's actually in the backfield playing deep safety as a wide receiver. Playing DB. High motion. They do try to set up a little screen, and it's incomplete. Only took two seconds off the clock. Interesting formation. I thought they had more than two men in motion. I'd like to see that one again. I'm sure there's three guys in motion. In high motion. They aren't going to show it. 
So three seconds to go. They are trying to set up a screen with a couple of blockers running in front of them. Play clock is approaching 10. Sioux City's going to have to hurry up. Same formation. We'll see if they try it again. All stacked on the near side. Adam Loftus calls timeout. It's Omaha's last timeout. Again, want to see that play. And they saw that Sioux City left the same personnel on the field with the intentions. Four wide receivers on the near side. Put a couple in motion and just do a little dump pass and try to see if you give them a little convoy to try to run them up the sideline and make something happen. Might even have a another pitch downfield with that cluster of receivers. Omaha, Sioux City. Somebody's three seconds away from advancing to Champions Bowl 7 for the CIF championship game against the Salina Liberty. Salina victorious over Billings 26-14 earlier tonight. Here we go, three seconds to go in Sioux City. Prohaska in the pistol with Brown. High motion, drops back, wants to throw, pump fake, goes for the end zone as you expect into coverage, and it's incomplete, and the Beef have won and advanced to Champions Bowl 7. Can you believe it? Omaha avenges a loss to Sioux City on April 30th and comes up here and defeats the Sioux City Bandits 49-45 to and end Sioux City season for the third straight year. The number one seed has been knocked out of the CIF playoffs and we're gonna have a rematch of Champions Bowl number six in Salina, Kansas, one week from tonight. What a game. We'll come back. We'll wrap it up. You are listening to Omaha Beef Professional Indoor Football all across the Boomer Sports Network. At Union Bank, people don't have your money. Your money has people. First home people, investment people, people people, people who answer the phone and your chats, dream car people, dream retirement people, driving your dream car in your dream retirement people, small business people, credit card people, and all the other people you need. At Union Bank, our people help you do more than you dreamed possible. So stop in and say hello. We can't wait to see you. Union Bank and Trust, member FDIC. State Farm Insurance agent Amanda Spencer is not only a proud sponsor of the Omaha Beef, but also the proud sponsor of the honorary family of the game at all Omaha Beef home games that recognizes those who give back to our community. Amanda and her staff serve the entire states of Nebraska and Iowa, so call her today at 402-346-5553 for a free quote on your car, home, renters, life, or business insurance needs. You can also visit her website at aspencerinsurance.com. State Farm agent Amanda Spencer. Proud sponsor of your Omaha beef. Sometimes you take on an opponent with an unstoppable attack, and your only hope is a defense that's just as dominant. Club Car Wash is the official car wash of the Omaha beef. Your vehicle gets destroyed by dirt and grime, so get the best defense in the league. Club Car Wash. Sign up for an unlimited membership and make sure your ride is always game day ready. With three locations in Omaha and more coming soon. Clubcarwash.com. Club Car Wash. Join the club. Founded in 2016, IAMS Wealth Management is a service-oriented organization dedicated to supporting independent investment advisors who provide holistic fiduciary services to clients. We operate as the back office support team for dozens of advisors throughout the country that are experienced in financial planning, investments, insurance, and more. With our assistance, they are equipped to focus their time and energy on what's most important, you and your needs. Call 888-255-7670 or visit our website at IAMSWealthManagement.com. Another unbelievable chapter to the I-29 rivalry. Omaha did what a lot of people really did not think they could do, but they are defending CIF champions. 
And they have come into Sioux City and knocked off the top-seeded Sioux City Bandits, 49-45. to They trailed by as many as 13 points in this game in the first half, but took charge in the second half, starting with a basically an onside kick to start the second half, took the lead, and the defense played lights out in half number two, only giving up 11 points. And they have come in and stole this playoff game from the Bandits in front of a raucous Omaha crowd who made their way up here tonight. What a showing here for the Omaha fans. And glad you got to listen to this one here on the Boomer Sports Network. Top of the hour as we wrap things up, you're listening to KOBM Omaha, 94.5 FM, 1490 AM, myboomerradio.com, and that is where you can hear Champions Bowl number seven. Champions Bowl on the Boomer Sports Network for the second straight season. And it will be a rematch of Omaha and Sioux, or excuse me, in Salina. At the Tony's Pizza Event Center, that was a game Omaha was victorious 40 to 39 a year ago for their first championship. A blocked field goal at the end of that game. Boy, it's gonna be hard to top this one here tonight, but you never know in indoor football what you're going to see. And Omaha has played tough, and they are not giving up that defending championship title without a fight. Should be a good one. So we are back at you one final time next Saturday night from Salina, Kansas, 635 kickoff. We will take to the airwaves at 620. For Nick Burris back at Boomer Worldwide Headquarters, Todd Walkenhorst coming to you from the Tyson Vents Center where the Beef are headed to Champions Bowl number seven with a victory over their arch rival Sioux City 49-45. Can't wait to see you next weekend. You're listening to my Beef Football all season long right here on the Boomer Sports Network. Omaha on the count of three. I need you to please ring your bells for me. Tell the whole world what you come to see. One, two, three. Omaha Beef. Professional indoor football on the Boomer Sports Network was brought to you by A United, All Hands Waterproofing, Amanda Spencer and State Farm, Amazing Pizza Machine, American Shaman, Better Bodies, Beyond Golf, Bright Minds Learning Center, Club Car Wash, Comfort Inn, Complete Fitness, Craft Axe, Cross Training Center, Crown Property Management, DBS Burr, Eternal Tattoo, Fazoli, Fire Water Bar and Grill, Frank's Pizzeria, GBR Auto and Sale, Habits, Horsepower Realty, IAMS, Imagine Body, In Phase Car Audio, Jerseys, Lansky's Pizza, Live Hydration, Nebraska Orthopedic Med, New Spine, Quality Clinic Research, Rebath, RMHC, Ryland Contracting, Shields, The Bastion Moving Company, See the Trainer, Soldier Valley Spirits, South O Roofing, Summit Center Insurance, Titanium HVAC, Union Bank and Trust, Meridian Credit Union, West Omaha Cairo, Wounded Warriors Family Support. This was a broadcast of the Boomer Sports Network.